Welcome to Guys We Fuck. The anti slut shaming podcast. Yo, you haven't said it? I'm Christina Hutton. I'm Corinne Fisher. And I'm the fuck boyfriend. Bring us your slutty, your horny, and your shame. Hey, you a slut? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about fucking. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Where you been? Where you seatbelt? Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fuck. Oh, that was cryptic. Um, I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christine Hutchinson. I don't know what was it was. I don't know what it I meant. It felt by that. like the universe told you to say that, and now I'm worried. Uh oh. Uh oh. I, I get very worried about car stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Well, that's maybe- why I still. That's why I forgot how to drive. F- forgot how to drive. <laughs> in quotes. Well, now that I no longer have a Mustang and I have a Volvo, shout out to Volvo. Uh, I do drive totally different i drive like i have kids in the car i'm taking to soccer practice yeah i'm like way calmer i don't get pissed off well it's not, i feel like it's not as fun to like recklessly drive a volvo that is exactly why i drive calmer because <laughs> it's like oh like- so lame oh look at that mom on coke right it does look like you have some kind of uh over-the-counter pill problem or, or no prescription <laughs> pill yeah, problem. yeah 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 it's yeah. like a prescription pill problem know, which yeah. is like not that's not Cool. Ugh, it's, it is very lame. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to like murder my husband's mistress or something in that Volvo. But you know, we're here and we're alive, and you are too. And that's exciting because if you find yourself in New York City Friday, December 1st, that is the next installment of Guys We Fucked Live at the Midnight Theater. These shows are fucking fun and really wild. Good. You can be there in person. You could also purchase streaming tickets. It's on a Friday, it starts at 9 30. And you're going to be amazed. It's going to be one of the best nights of your fucking life. Also, beautiful theater. And uh, Tommy and a bunch of his friends came to see me last time. Didn't tell me that they were coming and didn't t- didn't tell me until they were back home. <laughs> I did their see Tommy. That I... They were there, which I found to be so funny. But that, but literally, I, as I told Christina, I was like, I had a feeling Tommy was going to come to the show for some reason. And I was like, wow, you psychic. But it's also like. I have a lot of I have a lot of meaningful and important intuition, but I also have a lot of useless intuition. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but do you ever get use a useless intuitive hit that's not true? I mean, your intuition's pretty, no. pretty good track record. No, no. I still can't tell when it's intuition when it's not. Like I'm, I know it's subtle and it's a whisper, and that's, those are those help me. But like sometimes my th- dumbass thoughts are also subtle. Yeah, I you mean, know? for me, it's like a, you have to filter it, but um, filter out the like obsessive compulsive. But those will be like ruminations. So for me, yeah. they're pretty actually easy to filter out because it'll be a constant thing. Like if I, if like my mortal self is, if it's something my mortal self is worried about, I know that's that's Corinne thinking it, not my intuition, Your, not, yeah. not like not my higher self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, yeah, sometimes it's just like okay. I mean, like it's lovely that Tommy came to the show, but that wasn't like. Ooh, yeah. Can wow. you imagine if you change like, of careers? If you called like the California psychic hotline and they were like, your best friend's gonna come see your show. You'd wow, be like, here's a thousand dollars. This was Thanks. a terrible waste of a dollar ninety nine per minute. Yeah. Oh, dollar ninety nine per minute. <laughs> That's a terrible waste oh, of money. God. Yeah, it is, guys. Save save your coins. To see us live. If you're listening to this the week it comes out, which means you're a luminary subscriber, which means we love you. Uh, more. Um, November 10th and 11th, I'm going to be headlining Zanies in Chicago um, with Chanel Ali featuring. She is a fantastic hmm. comic. She was like, I'm going to be in town. Can I feature? I'm I like, like Chanel. Oh, you just made it so sound good. like an animal. No, I love Chanel too. Yeah, she's so talented. So that's going to be really fun. I love her stand up. And then the next day, Kevin and I are flying in that to Nashville, Tennessee to do a one nighter 7 p.m. Uh, at, at Zanies in Nashville. So come, come and hang and see us. And uh, as always, uh, four times a month, I host uh, Zoom Sherapy uh, for my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. And wow, I had one today and it was really fucking good. The topics we discussed were, oh my God, um, aliens. This one girl lives on a, a, a property that her dad used to work for the government. And there's all this crazy UAP info activity going on. And I love that shit. Uh, we talked about boundary setting. This woman was in a thruple situation. and she her boundaries were getting a tested. Thruple situation ship? No, so she her or like partner, an actual throw. Oh, okay. an actual throw. I was like, well, that's heavy. Yeah, but they've been together for ten years before introducing a third, and and so I'm like, oh wow, she like really did the work to make sure they oh, were yeah. solid. And I was like, good on you. I love hearing that. Um, and then just like when you have abandonment issues, uh, and you feel abandoned because the girlfriend's with your husband, and you're like, ah. So we just talked about that. It's some good stuff. And the audio from every Patreon uh, gets uploaded to the Patreon. So if you can't be there to participate, 
you can listen back to it. And uh, yeah, I'm really proud of it. Patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. And then, of course, you guys can check out my weekly news with, a, you know, the special Corinne Flair uh, without a country. Uh, been very interesting, obviously, the past few weeks because we've been really digging into Israel and Palestine, but I'm not, I'm not taking like the same approach that other uh, news sources are, are taking, which is like pick a side and really run into it. And then just tell everyone why the other side is bad. Like I've been going back historically into uh, you know, the entire history of the middle East and the conflict there and, and figuring things out and explaining why, you know, Israel might be feeling this way and Palestine might be feeling this way. I like to, I like to do the news like I'm a, like I'm a, a couples counselor. Yeah. Cause I do find like me kind of looking at news stories from the same perspective that you would, if you were looking at a relationship. But what I've learned from doing this show is you really can look at almost everything uh, in life uh, from the perspective of a romantic relationship. So it's been kind of interesting to do that. So you can subscribe on YouTube to Without a Country podcast or and or um, you can also follow me on Instagram Without a Country podcast. And of course, if you know, we're we're swiftly approaching 2024. So Ooh. Washington, D.C., uh, February 29th through March 2nd, I am headlining the D.C. Comedy Loft that's going to be a really fun show. Haven't been to D.C. in a couple of years. I think the last time is when I was with you in yes, D.C. And we were, fun. what were we, what was, was it that? the book tour thing? Oh, one? But or was wait. that the one where the girl scared us and we thought we were going to get selena not Gomez. I remember that we were eating from a fancy toast shop. We found a place where they Whoa. sold really expensive toast and we got really yeah. into it. Oh, I'm getting I'm getting a memory. Of yeah, that. like they had avocado toast, but then they really leapt from there into some yeah, other like dynamic bana- toast options. Like Nutella with bananas yeah, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was wildly overpriced, wow. but delicious. Yeah. Nutella with bananas. Huh? Also, fun fact, <laughs> Shut up, Michael. Washington, D.C., home to the largest Wawa so far. There's so room far. To, there's room to open bigger ones. Yeah. In New York. Um yeah, it feels like a, in a city wouldn't be the biggest one just because of the per square foot yeah. cost. This Wawa has a dine-in area with like tables and chairs. It's Ooh. huge. Oh. It was the one right across from the hotel yes. we were staying at, right? Yes. I remember I, I was waiting outside it at a certain point with other people to get breakfast sandwiches. Yes. Because we were out late enough that I was like, I'm but just going to wait. So they close from like 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. to yeah. like clean. And my, we were my, very furious. I, my hotel looked onto the Wawa, and I was—I went to go in, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I was so mad because yeah. I was really dead set on having this fucking turkey sausage on a on a croissant. Yeah, and uh, and then I went back up on my hotel, and I just watched for an hour people drunk, wasted ass people going up to the Wawa, looked open, and then go, "What the fuck?" and having a meltdown. It yeah, two to three sounds seems like the wrong bracket. I would yes. I would choose three to four or four to five if I'm yes. closing for an hour. Two to three yeah. is too early. Yeah, do four to five. Yeah. Ain't nobody, if you're out that late, drunk, four to five, you could find a diner. You know what I mean? Like, it's fine. But maybe it's it a corporate far. plan because to... to to save their workers the nonsense of the because I think mm, I think two a.m. is is closing time or in in D.C. because it's usually closing time in any city that's not New York is two yeah yeah, yeah last yeah. call whatever right um and then maybe that's on um, but it seems like it's I don't know like I haven't done looked at the at the breakdown it seems like yes it would be aggravating but you would still lose a lot of money by not being open in that time especially because I mean if you go to a Wawa drunk I'm spending. Ten to twenty dollars more than I would sober. Hell yeah! yeah. Because that what well, you know, while we got all the snacks you could possibly dream of, right. and a whole deli behind the screen of a computer at your service. Oh yeah! I mean, whoo! Yeah, give me those. Give me that gobbler. It's gobbler season, baby. <laughs> oh gosh, it is. So we are in our second our second episode of men. A celebration. celebration. And I have been watching, so my man hero this week, I'm, I want to celebrate him. I want to have him on the podcast. I mean, if anybody listening knows him, I, I, we have some contacts, but like, I, I want to wrangle the forces. We'll do it over Zoom. It's Russell Brand. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's perfect and never did anything wrong, and he's a feminist hero. <laughs> um, it is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hmm. Holy shit. Oh, interesting. I did not know. Not expecting okay. that. I didn't expect it either. Also, like a Republican politician. So so get this, dude. Yeah. 
He's not this. the worst Republican politician. No, he's incredible. Yeah. He's actually an amazing human being okay. with a fantastic life story. And he treats his life and always has very ahead of his time, Arnold. There's a Netflix docuseries, uh, I think it's called Arnold, that I, I highly recommend. This guy, full of surprises, okay, and has managed uh, to have a work-life balance, meaning like, his, he said this in the doc, my personal life is good and healthy and my career is healthy. And you don't get a lot of people with both. This guy, I wish he could be president of the United States because I would fucking vote for him. Whoa. He, he got into bodybuilding when he was younger and he, his parent, there was issues with his parents, but he said his younger brother was really affected by it, uh -huh. really affected by their parents in a way that Arnold was just wasn't. Yeah. And he was like- Similar. We had similar uh, qualities in my brother and I, but- these qualities were uh, uh, positive in in my life mm. and the, the downfall of my brother's life. And he goes, it's all mental. It's all how you think about things and approach things. That's such a bodybuilder perspective. Well, so uh, so what he started doing when he was bodybuilding, oh, I have this quote because I'm like, you motherfucker, Arnold. I fucking love you. Um, he... Uh, la, 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 la. Uh, oh, so he always aimed to be, you know, the best in whatever he did. And mm -hmm. he crushed bodybuilding and he gave bodybuilding a name by being a part of this documentary. So all this stuff is in the docuseries. Um, but he said, uh, oh, yeah, I focus on my strengths and working out, but I also focus on how I can derail my opponent psychologically. <laughs> so part of his strategy, but he's very open about it. And he's like, Part of my strategy is, of course, I can control what I work on with me, but sure. also, is there a way that I can get under the skin of my opponents? And he's, there was this one thing where he was up against his childhood hero with weightlifting, oh. and he said, he said to him, or I think he might have said to camera with him standing right there, like, in this match, I'm your father and you're my son. Like, he just said that, and, like, it totally derailed the dude, and he won. Interesting. And then he crushed it in bodybuilding, and he's like, all right, what's next? And he was like, I think I would like to become an actor and see how I can get successful in that. Hmm. He really became a real estate mogul before he made millions of acting. He just like started buying apartment buildings in Los Angeles. That's what we're trying to know, but yeah. I mean, but like, and then, and then he met Maria, which I did not know was a Kennedy. She a yeah. fucking kid. I didn't know yeah. that. I just thought she's like some lovely lady. No. Um, so he so was. I, I feel like Hollywood is all like so much more incestuous than we really like realize. Like, really? like you know, someone's not just like you know marrying. Like you know, even like a Brooklyn Beckham. It's like that's not just some like chick. It's like her dad owns Wendy's. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And <laughs> she's got the hot. She's got the face to prove it. Yeah, My yeah. God, she's the rich bad. do not date down. That's they, they do it they like would. in like fantasy stories. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. The Prince and the Pauper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this, Arnold's incredible. And then he got, but he was invited to this party by one of the older mem members of the Kennedy family who just like heard of him and liked him. Mm -hmm. And then was introduced to Maria. And when she was, he was introduced, the woman was like, "This is Maria. She's she's very fond of you. She has like an eye for you." And then so Maria like picked him out. And then they just like had this beautiful love. They didn't go quite into the love story, but like. It was really great. And then after he, he annihilated the box office in the 80s and came up with all mm, of his own taglines. And he made a point to like, I don't want to get injured in my movies, but not as in like, I don't physically want to get injured. I don't want my characters to ever be down and out in these movies. So that's why he has these smug lines of like, oh, you don't want to do that? Okay. And then he presses a button and a bomb goes off. You know, like, so he really kind of curated his career in that way and competed with Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, because I know. Because Sylvester was the box office hero and then Arnold came along and then Arnold was number one. Well, Arnold actually says in a Sylvester Stallone uh, documentary that Sil Sylvester Stallone was always a little bit ahead of him. He, yes. Uh, which I thought was like, huh, big of you. Yes. To admit that on camera. He really appreciates competition and he's very honest with himself on like, if a guy's better than me, like, that's awesome. I, that's going to make me strive to be better. I'll tell you what, Sylvester Stallone's definitely hotter than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Holy shit. Oh Some of these God. early Sylvester Stallone. He, so I was watching that. Ooh. What was that movie? Ooh. Fuck, what was it called? It was one of his early movies. It was the one that was the starting movie of Rambo, but it was full, before the Rambo. First break. one. Yes. Okay. So good. He's so hot. He's really He's hot. like an ad for Botox also. Like that guy doesn't have any facial reactions. And the reason why, well, the reason why he has that little like um, impediment, like speech impediment, but also his mouth is actually the way it is, is like his mother was so like broke that he was delivered at some like walk-in clinic and they, did, they fucked up the delivery. And so he's had that since he was a baby. Oh, 
Holy shit. And I was like, I mean, honestly, though, but that really just talks Badass. about the universe because it's like that could have been an impediment for it, and it turned out to be like one of the signature things about Sylvester Stallone and just like helped him stand out that much more. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think it is, you know, kind of re- it goes into what you're talking about with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's like you can let something about you be a pro or be a con, and that's up to you. Yes. And he let everything about him be a pro. Uh, and he really set goals in the way that I see women setting goals for themselves now of like, I can do this and it's yeah. going gonna, it, gonna to be hard work. Here's step by step. He like always had that in him, which was really cool. And uh, he wrote a bunch of stuff down. He always aimed to be the best. Um, I was yes. looking to see if he produced this documentary himself because I was like, this it feels skewed. me. <laughs> But then he got, he crushed it in acting for years and years and years, and he was everywhere, and he was making so much money, yeah. and then he got a business partnership, <clears throat> he got a business manager, he's like, I want to be making investments. Mm-hmm. He was, he's one of the reasons we have Humvees. He invested in Humvees okay. to be like a bigger, like these bigger military vehicles to be on the streets. I mean, that, to, I know that's not great for the environment, but. Um, <laughs> that's a weird it's thing. Just, he's got a big, big footprint, and then. He was having a conversation. Carbon with, footprint. <laughs> very, yes, big in carbon. And then he was having a conversation with Maria, and he, because of her being Kennedy, and he was invited to all of these, uh, he was invited to the Special Olympics and fell in love with these kids and being able to help them and raise awareness uh, for kids with disabilities. Uh, he was like, I think I want to run for office because I have a good understanding of what people need and how they're not being heard. And Maria had this really traumatic reaction to it because, you know, all, her, all of her family has been murdered. And so I would she, say that's warranted. she freaked out. She yeah. was like, we were in a hot tub and I was running a fire and she freaked out. And, and he said, he goes, all right, if you're not 100% behind me, I won't do this. And I was like, wow, very interesting. And then there was a moment where he was debating running. He was supposed to go on Jay Leno and either announce that he was or was not running. And Maria still didn't want to run, but she slipped a note under the door when he was in the bathroom. And she was like, you were running? I said, just saying this. And if you're not running, you should do this. And he basically took that as her blessing. And so when he was on the uh, Jay Leno, Jay was expecting him to say, I'm not running. And then he just made the decision. And then he fucking what? Like, this guy, everything he does is good. And then there's this scene in one of the, like, the third episode where he's driving a six-wheel military tank that he purchased. And he goes, it's a toy. Like, and he goes, people forget to have fun. He's like, you you have to have fun. Most people don't do that. They worry, and then they work, and then they worry, and then they work. And where's the fun? He's smoking a stogie in his six-wheel military thing on his, like, private compound. And I'm like, oh yo, this motherfucker figured something out, like, from jump. So that's why Sylvester Stallone is my man hero. Or or, 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 I oh knew that so I knew there would be a wife heavily involved once you said it was a man living his best life. I Did go, you get to the part? Where there's the a wife affair? heavily involved. No, I haven't gotten to that yet. I'm only three episodes yeah. in. Because I was. Oh, say, I don't know if it's in the in the thing. Oh, I was going to say I hope it is. He has a love child with a maid. I go. I was like, there's definitely heavy tra- 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 problems in their marriage. I was like, I knew that. I didn't know that there was specifically an affair with the maid. But yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't get to that part. I mean, yet. listen, I love Schwarzenegger too, and he among us throws a cast without some cast the first stone, but like. For sure. Well, and he's yeah. very, like, a, like when he's on a movie set, he's kind to everybody and stuff. I mean, obviously, that's... I, honestly, I was watching them, and I'm like, this guy is so awesome. Yeah, because they're he's, divorced now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah, he cheated on her. Well, okay, because so, sure yeah. yeah. in my head, I was like, still be a good guy and cheat. I just, yeah, I I, I... I think, overall, Schwarzenegger's a net positive. Yes. I yeah. Agree. I mean, I, I, I'm a, I mean, I was, I'm a fan. You know? I can't believe how many times I was blown away and surprised by him. He, I love being surprised by people. I love thinking I got people pegged first. This is who they are. This is the box they live in. And then that box just gets obliterated by all these all of these facets of this person's life that I had no idea. And I, the whole time I was like, please, I hope you didn't get beat down. Please don't meet too somebody. Please don't meet too somebody. Because like, I, don't, I don't want your reputation to be in my head. Because I love you so much. And I'll never stop you. Yeah, and also, Boo Boo had a nice face when he was young. I mean, he's, he's handsome. He's a zaddy, for sure. But his he was hot, which I that, that kind of guy was never my type. But his face was, like, angelic. Yeah, well, I was, I was going to say, when you just said the Me Too thing, I was like, I feel like he was very recently Me oh, Too. I didn't want to, I, 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 I didn't want to look it up because I was scared. Like, it was, like, this summer. This summer? Yeah. Because I, I was like, I was like, I was like, the minute it came out of your mouth, I was like, no, that, like, literally just happened. I knew, I knew there was a fair. I knew that because I knew that they were divorced. But I was like, ah, an affair, I don't, like, that's not, that's just something for me. 
um, what it, I guess for men of celebration, we just don't talk about fat groping. <laughs> No, we have to talk about it. <laughs> we definitely got to talk was, about it. We approach. can't live in my fun world of just, you know, blind. Yeah, blind, so from ignore. June 2023, Arnold Schwarzenegger, this is from oh, Insider. Oh, mad reset. Arnold Schwarzenegger addresses accusations that he groped women. Forget all the excuses. It was wrong. So not only, he admitted that he did it. Oh, well, that's nice at least. Yeah. To fucking don't lie to me. I think it was younger it. Arnold. I think. Well, there's a lot of videos. Well, I mean, yeah. I, no, 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 I'm sure it was. It yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. He makes me feel if a little we're trying better, to though. salvage Justin, little bit better, Justina's 10 minute Arnold Schwarzenegger profile, but, you know, it's worth mentioning. Yeah, and Arnold Schwarzenegger Bro. is addressing accusations of, mis- of misconduct that have been hanging over him for 20 years. Right. Okay. But that's like okay. most, you know, most people's are, are old because, you know, like, he's not really, like, he's not at the top of his game right now where he could be broken people. I mean, that's not, you know. Totally, 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 totally. No, I mean, when he was discovered. Yeah, so it says, I, well, and it's also coming up because, like, yeah, probably in part because the stuff Doc's documentary was coming out. Yeah, uh, okay, so. It delves into, they're talking about the documentary, they say it delves into Schwarzenegger's personal life and sees him address the secret son he fathered with his housekeeper while married to Maria Shriver, as well as the claims that he groped and humiliated several women in separate uh, incidents so across three decades. Oh, Days shit. before he was elected okay. governor, this is such a uh, major thing. I, feel, I honestly fuck. feel bad doing this. That's all right. You know what? I have to, I have to learn to not hide from the truth. I literally did not look this up because I'm like, I don't want this to be wrong. Well, just when it came out of your mouth that your hero was Arnold Schwarzenegger, I was like, I still like what I learned about him on the documentary. Listen, but, I, I but think, that does negate some of the stuff. And that's what a documentary, you know, people always say, oh, that doc, new documentary was biased. And, and, you know, what I learned, what I learned from working for Michael Moore was that, like, Ooh. to make a kind of an entertaining documentary, you kind of do have to pick a side. And then you just fucking keep doubling down on whatever side you pick. So yes, this, this documentary very shows course. to be like, this is how Arnold Schwarzenegger positively impacted the world. I mean, sometimes in a docu-series, there can be one part where it, like, goes down a little bit. Like, in the Beckham one, they basically dance around the fact that he cheated when he got traded to Real Madrid. Yeah. But uh, they didn't really go deep into it. I'm sure that was because Victoria and David had final say. And yeah. They were just stunned if Arnold didn't have... Well, didn't that's why I was, why I was on the IMDb shocked. actually looking to see the credits, but he didn't. He wasn't I, in the quick scan I did while Christine was talking. I didn't see him actually listed as an executive producer, which was an, an interesting. But maybe I didn't go through enough credits. I mean, this docu series is very heavily led by interviews with him present day, right? So I imagine he's not going to talk about that stuff for sure. And then it says, so it says days before this is back to Schwarzenegger. Days before he was elected governor of California in 2003, the Los Angeles <laughs> Times uh, published a report in which six women accused Schwarzenegger of touching them in a sexual manner without their consent. Okay. Uh, in archival footage from his campaign trail interviews, the FUBAR star is seen calling the report made up and declaring that he never grabbed anyone or pulled up their shirt or grabbed their breasts. That's pretty specific. Uh, however, while delivering a speech on stage, he also issued a, a mea couple a culpa of sorts, admitting that he had behaved badly sometimes on, quote, rowdy movie sets. You know those rowdy movie sets? And had done things which were not right, which I thought was playful. Um, okay. Those people that I have offended, I want to say to them that I am deeply sorry about that, and I apologize because that's not what I'm trying to do, he added at the time. Okay. And now he's looking back and, re, you know, I, I'm saying that it was wrong. Blah, That's blah, pretty blah. cool. Man, he learns from his mistakes. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Ooh, and we will never know, but, you know. I wouldn't say that grabbing someone's breast is really a mistake, though. No, that's a song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you just didn't pause to think that you're violating someone's body, which, you know, shame on you. Yeah. For um, that. Yeah, I mean, it goes on and on. Obviously, you know, very similar with that. It's, that's just interesting. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they always do come, you know. Business Insider, obviously, it was like, you know, now's the time to write about it. Because of you course. do have to write these people give a shit about the person. Yeah, that's how you get clicks, baby. That's and how you get clicks. It's, it's on everybody's mind. Okay, well, you know. Let's have Maria Shriver on the show. <gasps> Let's have her do... I really like her. Let's have her do a, a, a podcast reply to the documentary about how amazing her husband I would love to hear from a slighted woman. Because yeah. no one tells Don't the truth, no theory, baby. truthier than yeah. a slighted woman. Yeah. I love it. Maria, oh 
open it by baby. You're a fucking Kennedy and we'll you can't catch you on a break. First. We'll have you on before our Oh my god. Uh, oh wait, and then yeah, Sylvester Stallone, I wanted, there, I, there was a quote because you, you shared some quotes. Sylvester Stallone, my favorite quote from the documentary was, I'm doing nothing good because I'm listening to everybody else. Which I mean, was a very, like, a very up my alley quote, of course. But, you know, I didn't realize he, he, like, no, he was not having a lot of success as an actor. He was just getting um, cast in kind of like these, he, as he calls them, thug roles. Because, um, you know, he's Italian in, during that time right. period. And pornos. Um, and Wait, pornos? Yeah. He was in a porn. porn? Oh, Is that I'd like to see that because I will absolutely watch that. I'm sure you can find oh, it. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like it very early. Plans tonight. It's like seventies, early seventies young. Slot. I bet Ben he has a huge dick. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely sure. Does I didn't that. watch this. Well, he's not dick with that face. Yeah. He's only yeah. like five ten or something. That's a right short pink combo. But uh, and and so he wrote and. He started and directed Rocky himself, yeah? He, well, he, he, didn't, direct. he didn't direct the first he, one. He directed the later ones. But yeah, yeah like but he, he wrote the He, he wrote, wrote Rocky, the script. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it's it's very much a page from, you know, Guys We Fucked. It's it, it, it's the same uh, thing that if, like, people can't see you the way that you know you need to be seen, you have to create a piece for yeah. yourself. That's the advice that I've given to so many, specifically male comedians over yeah, the years. Yeah, and yeah. they just refuse to hear me. I go, I'm literally telling you the exact formula for success. You have to create create something that will let people see you the way you want to be seen that's it that's yeah. the whole secret mm-hmm. and i've told so many people that and they just fucking but Corinne, still like to say someone's gonna give me why wasn't i picked for this thing because you have to show people who you are it is if the, the kind of talent that you have to have for someone to just pluck you out of you know, the, really the, hot the ether. And these are people who are actually pretty hot. They're, but it, but you have to show people this is specifically what I am good at. Yeah. Right. You know? Fly How the through. fuck would someone look at me in an audition and go, oh, this girl's good at making other people feel confident. You wouldn't fucking be able to get that. Right. right. You right. wouldn't know that. So right. So Stallone breaks through doing Rocky in a role where he's like slurring with words. And he's, a, you know, he, he fits a certain... Of, he is Rocky. He's, he's like... He is that character, an Italian guy from Philly. That's like a long shot. It works. He's actually from New York, not from Philly. He's right. from No, I know, kitchen. but Rocky yeah. is from yeah. Philly. Right, right, right. right. Which is so, a wise decision because you know Philly be odd. Right. But he, he fits that, and that becomes such a big hit that he basically just puts himself in a position where he can kind of like Do whatever. carve out his own path and call a lot of his own shots. He wins an Oscar basically in the first big thing that he does. And then he actually has uh, uh, yes, uh, like, like five flops in between that and then Rambo comes. Oh, he's oh been really? Horrific. Yeah, like, wow. Yeah, he, he had a lot of terrible uh, films come out. Uh, and also, people were really eager to see him fail, I think, because he got success so quickly. What's that like? Yeah. And um, it was a very, but that was very interesting. Well, there is a porn on, um, well, xvideos.com, The Italian Stallion. Uh, he doesn't, I mean, you know, just to see each other. Yes. Oh, oh, thank God. I Look love that. That ad literally started with old pussy is better than no pussy. Yes. Yeah, oh, that. yes. That's awful. Old pussy is amazing. I mean, how old are you talking? What's happening? Oh, okay. They're on the couch. And she's it's licking a fruit. Oh, so 70. She, she looks like she's... Oh, wait, no. She's kissing his hand. He's like... Oh, wow. Two ladies now. They're making out. Where where are you, Sly? Where are you at, Sly? Okay, those ladies are really doing it. The ladies are still doing it, so that's just nowhere to be found. There he is. Let's see that cock, so Sly. This this is there's still a lot of like Which? touching. But not a lot of insertion that I'm seeing. Where is your dick? Oh whoa. So now Sly is on a pile of ladies, three of them. That looks fun. Oh, that one's a nice one. Where's your dick? Where's the bush? Oh boy, she got a wax. This, but show me that dog, Sly. You, you don't, you're not even seeing anything that would, how would this make anyone horny? Well, oh wait, there's Dick. Oh, this Dick's not bad. Ah, 
Ah, get, get out of the way, lady. Oh, he's dead flaccid. Huh. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, it doesn't look like it's a wrap. <laughs> well, see, that goes to show you, you can be in the company of three beautiful women to film a porno, and they still sit in silly putty in the mouth. Hey, okay. can, can we just Google Sylvester Stallone on the top? and proceeded to brainwash me about shit he had no idea about. He would spoon feed me views about women and their roles. So as you can imagine, he kind of fucked up my young head. Mm. Yeah, man, that's, see, that's the thing with these dudes that are like shitty and they're adult men. I'm like, you weren't born that way. And I know you weren't. So like, let's dive into the core of you, okay? But when I was scrolling through SoundCloud, I saw your podcast and my young brain went, Women talking about sex? Hell yeah. That's how we get you. That was the plan. You <laughs> fell for it. But after listening to it, I wasn't happy. <laughs> Even started to hate listen. Honestly, <sighs> I love that. That's so much of our demographic. But as episodes went by, I found it harder and harder to disagree with your points until eventually something gave and I started doing my own research. Yes. yes. I love that for you, Kang. Pretty much immediately saw my dad was a fucking idiot. It's a bummer to realize that, but it happens. So you two pretty much changed my entire view on both women and life. Starting realizing therapy is for everyone. What women do with their bodies is their choice. And after listening to some of your LGBT guests, I even realized I was gay. Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh yes! Oh, what, how interesting. Well, very interesting. My life could have gone down the wrong path and could have spent my entire life before coming to terms with my sexuality without your podcast. <gasps> Thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much. Attached uh, is an image of my cat. Not important to the email, but it's a cute cat. And she's flabbergasted. It's on the email. It is a very cute cat. Oh, my God. That makes me so happy. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Getting, them, uh, getting them young. Because I, I feel like if we're going to... If you're going to be... You're going to be brainwashed by something. We'll brainwash you. Because I do think that our our values are pretty even-keeled and in the spirit of humanity and in the side of humanity and growth and love. Well, and also, I mean, like, when he's talked about doing his own research, I think that's the most important thing. Like, yes. if you get interested in something we're talking about, don't don't just take our word for it. That's idiotic. Yeah, go out and do your own research and then see how you feel about it. But I think it's our job to just present new ideas or ideas in a way that you maybe hadn't thought of them before. And then, yes, I, anytime someone's like, oh, I agree with almost everything you say, I go, well, that's uh, alarming. That's not, yeah. Because yeah. you're not me. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, this is, uh, it didn't say my name, so I didn't, I didn't, it was like a 
cue card that I didn't know how that was going to I go, me know how to read. Uh, it says, did that help? I'm a 21-year-old gay man in a polyamorous relationship with a woman. Interesting. I know that sounds weird, but when we got together one and a half years ago, we tried to have sex because there we had a very strong romantic connection between one another and when that failed she offered me to remain together since everything worked except for sex and to be poly so that we could both be sexually satisfied outside of our relationship Whoa. at the time i had never considered polyamory for myself and looking back i agreed to it because i was in love with her regardless of my sexual orientation that's an interesting concept so fascinating and i was willing to do anything to keep the relationship going i thought i could separate my sexual needs from my romantic needs flash forward to now she has embraced the poly lifestyle and i have not she has another boyfriend that i like and have no problem with and she has started another fling with a man on reddit i'll leave it at that Personally, I've had two one-night stands that made me realize that I wanted more than just sex with men I barely know. I also have no other romantic partners because, frankly, the idea of having two partners sounds extremely exhausting to me. And for a while, my girlfriend was enough. Still, it seems like it's the only way for us to be together and for me to have a healthy sexuality. We are getting at a crossroads where I need to actually embrace polyamory or get out of the relationship even though I love her. But I'm not sure what to do. How do you know if you're poly? You're not. You're should not. I, you're a gay man. Yeah. Should I try it and then decide? Or should I trust my heart uh, that I'm just not polyamorous? I think you just need attention. And sh- this woman, um, in the way she presented herself as a friend to you, gave you attention in the way you needed. And you are mistaking intimate friendship with romantic love. Yeah. That's because I mean. she's not giving you, if you're not sexual with her, I'm assuming you guys like don't make out and hold hands. But like that part of a relationship is really important it's for like trust building and feeling seen and heard and having a steady foundation with a person and if you're not attracted to her because you're not straight then you deserve to feel attracted to somebody and then also have those things reciprocated those like romantic portions of the romantic relationship reciprocated. yeah I also think it's like if you're hanging out so you're 21 years old right so if you're hanging out with people only your age and you compare what women at 21 act like and what men act like at 21 just women have a lot more and this is a broad statement i'm not saying every woman and i'm saying nothing no men but if we're doing a stereotype most women at that age will be able to give a lot more of themselves emotionally um than a 21 year old guy would so it's like you know and i'm guessing if you're gay you have perhaps a little bit more feminine energy than a typical straight guy right so you probably need a little bit more um emotion in your relationships and that's why it was easier to get that from a woman i mean like there's you know that's why the you know the fruit flies exist you know so oh is it the women it's, 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 it like it's a progressive on. it's a progressive way to say fat gag okay. yeah i was gonna say is that what you mean okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so we can't say that anymore so it's fruit flies now people yeah. have other sayings for it but fruit flies is something that i uh thought was cutest yeah that's um, cute and, uh, yeah, and so that's why that is such a, like, a common relationship structure, mm. right? You, like, every, kind of every gay man of a, a certain, every certain type of gay man with a little bit more feminine energy, maybe feminine needs, right, has a fruit fly. It's because you're getting so much from that relationship, right? Yeah, you know, even yeah. me, like, like you know, I don't, my best friend, I don't, I don't really find to be um, super feminine, but um, he, probably more feminine than me, but I mean, like, the most straight men yeah. are more feminine than me, so... Yeah.
tried to explain sex. Give your biology teacher a vote. He couldn't even say the word penis without some sort of inflection and only spent one hour of class on the topic. Penis? One, oh, he only spent one one hour class on the topic. Wow. That's my number one. One of my, one of my biggest pet peeves is when people can't say a, a sexual organ without saying it in a silly term like vagina. Like, I hate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the things that we talked about when we started this podcast. I was like, can someone just say fucking vagina or vulva or penis in like a normal no fucking tone without singing it or making a silly or covering your mouth? Like, it's just, it's, it's so juvenile. Yeah, and it's a dry rubber. Yeah. Uh, cut to about six years after high school, just before I started listening. I had my first, first date. Again, very religious and sheltered. And we started making out and slash looking. The only sexual experience I had up to this point was porn. So I had no idea about the sensations of feel the moments. We attempt to have sex, but I'm so nervous about my sexual debut that I can't get hard, which is a recurring theme in my sex life due to religious shame and porn addiction I'm actively working on. Hell yeah, work on that boo. And we part ways. I go to leave and finish the job at home. When I get to the act, there is a strange substance on my penis, which I now know is pre cum Oh, damn. You didn't know that until then. Shit. That's pre-cum what happened. Pre-cum is so specific. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fine. Possible. What? what do you mean? That you wouldn't know what pre is? Yeah. Like, you it's... get it when you, like, if you wake up in the morning and you just, like, have an action or something. Oh, I know. You know, like, really? Yeah, you don't have to be. pre is my favorite oh, type sexual. of cum. It's my favorite really? It's my favorite iteration. Yeah, because it's not as as it's tastier. It's not as no. It's just like even to look at it, it's like more appealing. It's like a like like stickier and more fun and not like and also clearer, which I find to be yes. more visually appealing than the white chunkiness. Oh, yeah. white or yeah. yellow chunkiness, depending on oh, what you're eating. Yellow. Sometimes I've never it, seen it yeah. Sometimes it can be like an off white. I'm not saying like piss yellow. Yeah, well, like ivory. Uh, okay, so when I get to the act, there's a strange sh- substance on the penis, which I know is pre cum, and I freak the fuck out. I feverishly Google what it could be. Oh, to that word. And a multitude of STD options pop up, so I go see my local general practitioner about it. I get tested, and I'm clean, of course, because it's just pre cum. She prescribes me some antibiotics and sends me on my way. Antibiotics? A pre cum? She he probably missed, like, he Told probably the story. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were waiting until marriage, but she looked at my penis and we started to... Yeah. While my first girlfriend and, uh... Well, with my first girlfriend and any time after that, I get loads of pre but I still, to this day, won't get hard. And I cert- and it certainly isn't a reluctance or a uh, willingness. It is because I'm too nervous. Uh, is it because I'm too nervous in the moment? Absolutely. The, the, the erection stuff is completely... It's more mental than I thought need more emotional intimacy with my partner, I have no trouble getting hard. Behind There's me. your answer right there. Exactly. As we talked about with our urologist, but yes. I mean, like, that's the answer right there, even if you hadn't talked to them. It's Lower like, stakes. It's, there's, nothing you, there's nothing wrong with your dick if you have no trouble getting hard on your own. That's yes. your answer. Yes. I tried variations of, uh, variations of Viagra through one of your old sponsors, popped up, uh, popped one last year with a girl, and I was super into, and had been flirting with a lot to physically test the theory, and still... Dice. I mean, mine, the mind is very powerful. Now, uh, now I need some. Uh, now I need some form of therapy. Oh, I know I need some form of therapy, but not sure how to go about it. You just look up. Right there. Yeah, any th- this is not like so. This is I think pretty common. So any therapist should be able to uh, work with you on this particular topic. Also, too, because of COVID, a lot of therapists work over Zoom, so you can find somebody in a bigger, like the nearest city near you that work that specializes in like sexual wellness and therapy. Maybe that would be a good option just for your own comfortability. Thanks for not being shy about the word penis and teaching me so many things about, uh, about how to treat women. Much love to you. Um, also, too, I think the doctor, um, Marish, had mentioned this in his episode, but like, don't jerk off for a long time. Like, don't jerk off for a week and then have sex with your partner. There you go.
have seen it. First off, sorry if this is too long. Oh, I'll then apologize you, too. Like, don't. Um, <laughs> tried, tried to pare it down, but wanted to give the full scope. I started listening to your show recently at the behest of my wife, who is one of your biggest fans. We'd listened to a few episodes together on car rides and while cleaning the house. I see we're cleaning the house with her. I appreciate that. Um, but I've started listening to episodes on my own, and I just wanted to say I love what you're doing and glad I've been introduced to it. That said, we have a very small and hilarious beef. Let's go. I, 32 year old male, and my wife, 28 year old female, met while working at the same company about five years ago. We stayed just friends while we worked together, as I am a big believer in not dating where you work, and also nothing is more cliche than a dude in tech having an inappropriate relationship in the office. However, around 2019, I left the company, and during the early days of the pandemic, we began hanging out to just go for walks and see each other. This led to us dating, which led to us moving in together, which led to us getting engaged with, which led to us eloping this past summer. We work extremely well together. We communicate well, both for small annoyances and also larger discussions of our future fears and goals out of life. Another notes. Michael's dropping coins in the jars over here. Take a shot. Okay, pop bottles. I know I have flaws, and she has hers, but we support each other in our good times and bad. Also, only because I know the type of podcast you two run, it is worth noting that our sex is fucking phenomenal. It is worth noting. I know the type of podcast you two run. You whore would appreciate this. I lay that dick down good. Now to your doing. Um, a couple of years back, when we were still about a year into dating, we had a pretty deep discussion about our sexualities. Here, hers is for her to share with you, but she asked pretty decisively if I was gay or into men at all sexually. I explained that my life has led to me to be very interested in the LGBTQ community and that gay marriage, the plights of the trans community and stuff like that were a big deal to me, but that I was very happy and comfortable in my sexuality as a straight man. We continued to have a wonderful night and yada, yada, yada. Well, I think it's just confusing when uh, uh, men care about anyone other than themselves. (laughs) So I think that's what made you seem gay here, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry, men. Oh, that's so funny. Men, a celebration. <laughs> men, could you think about someone else for a fucking change? Listen, I think it's a small ass, but okay. <laughs> so funny. <sighs> then earlier this year, in an attempt to get her to start watching The Last of Us with me, I told her that the third episode was one of the most beautiful love stories I'd ever seen on film, and that it was uh, San. Uni- What's that? Uni- but for men, Sam. I don't know what that is. Sam. Fuck, it's a movie? You gotta stop. Know. Sorry, you gotta stop and look this up because it's gonna plague me. Now I just have fucking Sylvester God. Stallone cock that's such pictures a funny, on my phone. That's such a funny question. Is he a homosexual man or is he just considerate of other people? Oh, it's an episode of Black Mirror from season three. Okay. 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 This, I mean, I've watched the first one. Yeah, this led to another discussion a couple of days later asking if I was gay. Sure, I was. <laughs> she said. She really wants to be gay. She really wants to be gay or something. <laughs> she said that she didn't know any men that would understand that sort of love story All right, for that, what it was. That's not like, that's gay. No, that's just emotionally intelligent. Yeah, it's worth noting that she comes from a very small world. <laughs> I'll say. This guy has feelings. He must be fucking queer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, is it in Virginia? This is worse than me. Is Come it on. in Appalachia? Yeah. I again explained where I stood and asked if there was any other evidence that she was drawing from that we could talk about, and she said, no. Wow, dude. She straight up just said, You're considerate. You must be gay. That's really funny. Finally, fast forward to this past week, my wife came into the living room while I'm in the middle of fucking a guy. <laughs> Well, I'm in the middle of a movie to have a discussion about something, quote, important. So I shut off the The movie, movie. (laughs) and she asked to talk about my sexuality. All right, she, all right, now she's get off the dick. Yeah, we again went over the notes from before. She brought up my keen interest in the LGBTQ community. I mean, like, what, do you just, you want people to be happy and have equal rights. And The Last of Us again. At this point, it's been brought up several times, and I asked if there was any further reason that she brought it up. And she said that having listened to your show for years, that boyfriends and husbands secretly being in the closet comes up often. And so she became convinced that it was somehow one of the, I was somehow one of these folks. Okay, I mean, but there's what I there's say, other 
there's like reasons why I would say people are gay, not because they like an, an episode of The Last. Of yeah, us. and they're emotionally intelligent to understand the power of a love story. That's that's an emotionally intelligent person. Yeah, I know lots of guys who like love stories. Um, we had a great laugh about it. Good. Now look, I don't have any issues having a discussion about my sexuality, but I was in the middle of watching After Sun, oh, and so we gotta look up this soap opera. We gotta look up. You know, there's a lot of emotions in that one. Um, that's why we're, we're, I'm not familiar with any of these. And so now this is affecting my movie time. Oh no! Corinne and Christina, I ask for your aid in this matter. My question is simply: Can you help assure my amazing partner that I'm not secretly going to reveal reveal myself as gay and break her heart? Yeah, nothing. I gotta get something about this email. Reads as gay to me. And she's got best gay in her game. Yeah. So it was. You know why? Because it, it, there were. No, it wasn't. He number one. He apologized for being long. It wasn't long at all. No. There's not a lot of filler. We just got the facts. There was very little it's very emotion. That's some straight. It's, it's a very. It's a very straight yeah. email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so, straight. so, Madame, a straight male email. Your, your husband is not gay. Not gay. Not gay. The court has spoken. Not gay. Okay. Okay. This is a quick one. Spooky question. Oh, I love spooky shit. So a little background. Girlfriend and I, this is such a straight man email. Little background. Girlfriend and I have been together for two years this year. We basically have fallen out of the honeymoon phase, which I understand is normal. Yes, it is. But my question is, after I've done surprises for her, bought her sexy clothes, doing spontaneous trips, at what point do I realize maybe she's just not that attracted to me anymore? Or is that even a thing? Thing. Are you asking if it's a thing for a woman not to be attracted to a man anymore? Is that a real question that you just... That, that, that That's is a, a spooky thing. question. Ooh, ooh <laughs> there's a ghost of your future relationships. Um, I was, you know... You've fallen out of the honeymoon phase. Yeah. That's normal. Two years? I bet it's a long-ass honeymoon phase. Good for you. I okay. would ease up with the buying her sexy clothes. Yeah, because that could be interpreted Nothing. Weird. Nothing makes a woman want to fuck you less than the, the forced suggestion of a sexy outfit for her to wear. For you. <laughs> for you. <laughs> That's a good point. Get I me, mean, give me a fucking break. I'll be wearing sweatpants for two months if someone so much as presented me with that shit. I'd be wearing one of those one of those blow up Halloween costumes where you're the dinosaur, but you gotta like blow it up with air first, oh, and God. I would just walk around the house knocking shit over. Um, hey, uh, happy birthday! Could you be a little sexier? You fucking piece of trash. My question is: After I've done surprises for her, bought her sexy clothes, doing spontaneous trips, What's done surprises for her. Mean? As when a man says it, that's alarming. I've done some. What was the surprise? Here's a woman who's gonna fuck me at the same time as you. Yeah, we're having a three way, babe. Surprise! I'm GGG as hell. I uh, wonder if you realize maybe she's just not a trap. Okay, so yeah, you're, maybe you're equating the hot, like being out of the honeymoon phase as being out of the attracted to each other phase. Those are two different things. Like, and your attraction evolves over time and ebbs and flows. Attraction, especially romantic sexual attraction, is very cyclical. You know what I mean? So, like, you could go, and you're going to have, if you guys stay together, you're going to have phases of, like, being on and the phases of being off and phases of, like, oh. Sometimes in my relationship, like, it was, like, very fiery in the beginning, and then I'm like, wait, is it okay that we're just, like, sitting here not talking? And then I had to realize, like, yes, that's actually very healthy. And, like, it's weird to just talk all the fucking time. You know I've what I mean? I've been trying to tell this one that for I years. Know, I finally got it. I finally got it. It's a moment of silence that I was enjoying. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. We're not incompatible. We're just settled into each other, and that's really lovely. Fuck. Wild. As long as I have to be rocky. Also, I, it feels like he is putting a lot of the onus of the sexuality uh, having fizzled in a relationship on her. It's like, dude, what are you doing? What sexy outfits are you wearing? Are you yeah. still in shape? Do you brush your teeth three times a day? Yeah. What are you doing? And you know what? I'm also, sorry about you. You know what turns women on, too? What? Three times a day? Yeah, uh, I mean, I would think so. Oh, yeah. What, three times a day? Really? Really? I brush my teeth three times a day. Yeah, because well, I mean, like, awesome. uh, morning, and then before, like, whatever I'm doing for, like, a show, before my shows, and then at night. Yes, I'm doing So, I mean, like, if I'm in the house. He's not, he's not brushing his teeth three times If a day. I'm in the for house. Sure. If I'm in the house all day, only two. But, yeah, I mean, like, I. I just gotta get the shit out of your teeth. The floss is very it's like, ugh. If I'm gonna talk to people and I've eaten a meal in between, then, yes, I'm brushing my Sure. Yeah, because sometimes you got stuff in the middle of your teeth and you're like, oh man, I don't know, it's there. It's just exhausting to check. You can just brush it. Also, too, you know, so you spend a lot of energy at the top of the relationship. Surprises. I love surprise. Oh, I love that. I've never had a partner that did that, but I've always dreamt of it and always assumed somebody's about to surprise me and they never do, but that's okay. Because 
because we have my expectations are too high. Uh, but maybe channel some of that energy of like surprising her and doing spontaneous trips. That's a lot of work, a lot of energy. So morph that energy along with the way your relationship has been morphing and go, how can I be there for her now in a way that's sexy that turns her on? And I gotta say, when a dude like does an errand, like when my work like washes the car for me, fills up the tank, like just like a nice tiny thing that really yeah. helps. I'm so horny for that. I don't know, I don't know your partner, so she might not, but I guarantee it's not gonna it's not gonna be bad. Yeah, I think sometimes men concentrate on like these like big romantic gestures and you're not uh, you know, you're not good at the little acts of service that I yeah. think women really appreciate more in the day to day, right? Like it's lovely to get like a nice gift or to be uh swept away to a, a romantic trip, but that only that that's not really real life. That's like a fantasy world. Yes. I feel like men live in a fantasy world more often than women do. That's why we're in bad moods. Yeah. Um because we're kind of like, oh, okay, but we're over here in the real world making the day-to-day parts of your life work. Yeah. We're doing the fucking laundry, we're cleaning, we're taking care of the kids. I mean, not me, uh, not doing any of those things. But, <laughs> but in theory. Jerking off the bath. In theory, yeah. yeah. So be, be present in the relationship. Yeah. Sex. I miss the booty hole. Oh, wow. like, like 
furiously it. pounding. Oh, oh, I see. I thought like you hit the taint. I miss it. Yeah. I miss the booty hole while furiously pounding. Okay, furiously pounding yes. an anal. Can we just stop right there and go no to that? <gasps> Ow. Furiously pounding? No. No woman. We don't have prostates up our assholes. Oh. Guys do. So women don't like the pounding. I enter her vagina by mistake. Oh, what a terrible accident. Is there a product out there that we can use to tape or cover the vagina so that I can pound her booty hole like it stole something without accidentally entering her VJJ? No, is this these are, like? All right, these this are more this feels like a prank. what I was expecting on this episode. I, I, I was expected 15 of these. Died. Honestly, didn't, I, I did it. Because I had high hopes for men. But it's a, okay, it's a bad question. How do I tape my girlfriend's pussy up so I can go I'm to Pound Town on an asshole? One I'm of the Googling stupidest it. things I've ever heard. I, they no, they that say there's like, no bad questions or stupid questions. We found one. Well, no, this one stands with the uh, uh, the guy telling us that he can tell what a woman's vaginal lips look like by looking at her facial lips. That, that's, that was, that's insane. This is stupid. <laughs> I think they're two different things. One a was like a guy, a guy being, you know, just out of off his meds, I guess. And then this one is a person actually unintelligent. And it's Jesus. almost like being trolled. Okay, okay, but I answered oh. your question, okay? So I Googled tool to cover vagina during anal, and your answer is a vaginal dilator. And dilator. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we There's a lot of men that uh, want this exact same product. Yeah. Well, because I, I mean, can't the, believe something like that exists. I can't. I mean, I don't, I, that's not, I don't think that's the number one purpose for it, but I think they're saying, hey, this is not what we need this for, yeah. but if you do, love will find a way, But though. if you do find yourself, you keep, when you keep inserting your dick into the, the JJ while pounding someone during anal, this could be helpful to you, okay? You can get, you We're can get heroes. a whole set for like $16.99, right? all ages have been. Right? So this is, there you go. Because the thing is, if he does, if, well, you can't go into the pussy after going into the booty exactly. because then I'm going to get fecal fucking matter. UTI fecal and it's going to last matter. for a while. Yeah, it's very, that's very bad. So Also, okay, yeah, I'm not going to chime in on the other I was like, I knew there would be some kind of a vagina butt plug is what yes. we need and we found it. What do you know? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What do you know? Uh, okay, so how, how long have we been recording? Because I know we have been a little bit. We're at an hour five. Okay, cool. All right, so, uh, do we want to stop? No, I, I gotta read this next one. Okay, this looks juicy. Okay. <clears throat> Subject line My take on men and relationships. Ooh, take me to school. <laughs> um, not a question, but a comment regarding your conversation about why men stay in unsatisfying relationships. I think men so easily settle since even the worst woman is better than the best man. Sorry, that's not, I, I keep. Oh, wrong. we got a prankster. I keep that the wrong girl. line here. <clears throat> I think men so easily settle since they won't ever have to do so in any other areas of their lives. Oh, hmm, that's insightful. That's an insightful thing, but that's a big area. Right. Because of <sighs> hetero male privilege in our society, they can afford to have one area of their intimate life be cool. <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> Baby boy, you just served us some honesty, and I appreciate it, because that's what we fucking assumed anyway, and so... This is such an it's interesting theory. It's I love it. getting the truth. Women refuse to... Well, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll throw it to you in a second, yeah. Mikey. Um, Our resident man. Women refuse to settle because we are constantly having to... Deal. Wait, is this from a woman? No. But she says we. Women refuse oh, to settle. because we men. Because we men? No. Ref wait, ref women refuse to settle because we are constantly having to deal with the bullshit of some level of oppression or lack of opportunity or discrimination or expectations to lessen ourselves. Oh, she's seeking a woman? Is this from a woman? Oh, I don't care. Ugh, it's not your month. Dude, this is men's month. Get off of our thing. Let me check. Yeah. And because men are generally less invested in their internal emotional world, and women tend to... She said emotional and stuff like from a woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck. <laughs> sorry, sorry, everybody, I'll to have to take this episode with a woman. But we own. do have a mole. <laughs> and also, I love that this is the first theory that we were excited about. It's written by a fucking woman. Of course. Uh, uh, oh, this is so uh, interesting. Yeah, because a woman wrote us. Uh, God damn it. Fuck. And women tend to spend... Wait, okay, so... Wait, and because men are generally less invested in their internal emotional world and women tend to spend much more energy there, it holds less imp importance, I guess, and value to them. 
it's easier for them to let that be mildly unsatisfying because it's not that valuable to them to begin with. Further, I think the idea that men don't want to leave because of some caretaking slash providing responsibility is really infantilizing and demeaning to women. Uh, it puts women... I don't even know which... I, wait, wait. I, I think, think the idea that men don't want to leave... Because that's what I said. They, and when we talked about this a few weeks Right, ago. like the comfort, like leaving a relationship is harder for men because of the comfort that they get in the caretaking aspect of it. No, no, so. no. I, I, what I said was that I think it's... If, you're, if you are the one that has to lead the situation... Yeah. As a man, the conflict that I think you face is that you are essentially emotionally breaking down a woman, a woman that yeah. traditionally you're supposed to sort of like yes. protect. No, no, no. My therapist okay. agrees with you and my therapist is a, is a straight woman. She said she said men hate breaking women's hearts. Yes. yes. That's, that's, she, wait, that's the easy way to say it. She 100% agrees with you, yes, Michael. She 100% agrees yes. with you. They do? Yeah. Then why do they do it? They, they, do, do they, do, they don't do it that often. So, so I think what you're talking about is they don't show up for us a lot. But that like, breaks my heart. I'm talking that's about the, like that's the indirect. Yeah, indirect, exactly. Yeah. So they'll they'll dance around. They'll break your heart not directly, but to directly. You're already in a relationship with someone, so they'll skirt around not getting in the relationship. But when right. they are in the relationship, to say, Christina, I don't want to see you anymore. anymore you have to. I mean, I don't. You have to chop off their dick, and even then, they might forgive you. Wow. Um, it puts the worst. It puts women in a role of needing men. If that's how men view their female partners, are they even respecting them? Ew. Okay, so, uh, well, sorry. We have a rat in the house. Yeah, yeah um, get her out. <laughs> hey, lady, I move it over. It's men of celebration. Is this Caroline's month or is this our month? Who's Caroline? Okay. I don't know. I just imagine this. Wow. Brittany, Stephanie. Huh. by Luminary. Created and hosted by Corinne Fisher and Christina Hutchinson. Editing and music coordination by Mike Coscarelli. Theme song by Rob Patterson and Jake Kozen. Suck my wet ass pussy. <laughs> Christina said to cut that before, but now it's in there. Yeah, let's keep it. Who cares? Hello, everybody. How you doing? Where have you been? Drink some water. Remember, there's a solar eclipse happening April 8th. Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fucked. It's the anti 
Slut Shaming Podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. Los if you're Angeles. in Los Angeles. Los Angeles, what the fuck are you doing Saturday, May 11th at 9.45 p.m.? I know, you're going to see Corinne Fisher and Christina Hutchinson do a live episode of Guys We Fucked. There you go. Look at just me and Christina Dan with your voice, too. Yeah, I just, I exercise the demon. Wow. Just so you can tell you to buy tickets. Netflix is a joke festival. Saturday, the May 11th, 9.45 p.m. at the Region Theater. It's going to be a joke if you, if you don't get tickets. We are. So exactly. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. We're on thin ice with Netflix. They've made it very clear. A lot of power. They said, we'll throw you pictures of bone, and let's see how you do with that. <laughs> Chew on the bone. Okay. Yeah, I said, we love bones. I love bones, Daddy. Thank you. I've been waiting Thank for a bone my whole life. Bones. I can't get a bone by myself. I need it. Mm, okay. If you want to send us an email, it's sorry about last night's show at gmail.com. This email says, did I molest my brother and my cousin? <laughs> I love this show. Be the judge of that. I love this show. It's such a light, lighthearted show. Yeah. Um, hi, Corinna Christina. I love you both very much and have listened to you for years. Thank you, you for everything you've put out into the world and how much it's helped me understand myself and the world around me. I, I made it like that. There it didn't need to be. Y'all are the best. So I'm concerned that I molested my brother and my cousin. Okay. Okay, just another Monday, baby. Let's go. Let's All right. figure it out. This is my deepest, darkest secret that I've kept for years. Okay. I've never even told my therapist. That's, your therapist that was a wa- that's been a waste of your therapy. Yeah. I know, I know. Why pay a therapist if you're not going to tell them everything? She already hears us in her head. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's literally wasting everyone's money and time. Yeah. That, that, just like logistically. This should be the only thing we're talking about. Exactly. Until you, it, until you get through it. Yes. Honestly, I've just been too ashamed. So I'll tell you how us. Worse. <laughs> to the show yeah yeah it's taking me well we there is this thing where right. especially when you've been with your therapist for a long time like you do want them to like like, like you or respect you yeah, yeah yeah it's weird um uh honestly i've just been too ashamed it's taken me years to even write this email well, i'm glad you did I'm glad you wrote it i think i'm ready to share with my therapist but i also would really appreciate both of your perspectives on this issue because i trust you both to tell me the honest truth my brother and i have a large age gap i'm nine years older than him when he was around four and i was around 13 we were on vacation and a few times when we were playing together somehow on our own we ended up on top of each other in a bed rubbing up against each other it makes me want to throw up just thinking about it i guess we were kind of humping and it felt good and that was really the extent of it we were in a bed rubbing against each other and it felt good that's what kids do well 13's a little old for this, though. I guess Um, so. uh, I don't remember how exactly this happened, but it must have stemmed from me since I was the older sibling. Yeah. I was just learning about sex, and I assume I wanted to experiment. I want to mention that I was a very late bloomer when it came to sex. I went to a fairly religious school growing up and wasn't even given a sex talk until I was in eighth grade. Oh, that's so. Some people never get the sex talk, so that's a lot of people never get it. Yeah. Yeah. So this event happened a few years before that. What? So the, the, the rubbing of the brother. No, but she was 13, so how did that happen a few years before that? You're not, it can't be a few years unless you're 8th grade and 13 or you're like, that doesn't make sense. Oh, right. You're 13 in the 8th grade. Right. Because right, um, you turned 12 in 7th grade. I remember you turned 12 in 7th yeah, grade. Yeah. I mean, at the most, you would be 14 in the 8th grade. Yeah. Anyway. Um... I remember that as it was happening, I knew it was wrong, but I definitely didn't full on, fully realize what I was doing. Yeah, you didn't know that there was like a power dynamic going on because your brain wasn't mature enough to understand that, I imagine. I think we maybe were playing house or something. Yo, house Yo, your shit would go. Do you know how yeah. slutty, how much of a whore oh, seven-year-old, seven-year-old Christina was like, house hey, was Mr. Rancid. Rancid. Let's yeah. play house. Yeah. We would play this game called Boy Girl. Yeah. And we would get on... My friend was a year older than me. We would get on his mom's like exercise bike, and he would like we would like you know on the Titanic when Leo's like holding her from behind, like he would do that, and I'm like, it was the most alive I've ever felt. Yeah, no fucking game is it, the game of playing house when you are young is more disgusting than any porn you will ever watch as an adult. I concur. House is where it's at. Yeah. Anyway, back to back to the scene. Okay, I think we were maybe playing. I also, it's so don't worry, girl. It's also funny to grow up and know what it's actually like to live in a house. And you're like, this is not nearly as kinky as I even <laughs> hoped. My imaginary house was way more fun. Yo, I really wish. <laughs> okay. All right, so I think we were maybe playing house.
house or something and then we wanted to make a baby and I had maybe recently learned that this is how you do it. Yeah. I don't fucking know to be honest a lot of this memory is fuzzy slash hard to remember. All I know is that this happened a few times and then one time my brother asked me to kiss him and I remember a light bulb going off in my head that this was weird and then we never did it again. Good. Even though he asked if we could play this specific game together. Because it made him feel... registering it as... Was he registering it as sexual? No, I think I think he was registering it as this makes me feel good. Right, in a right. way I can't explain because I'm four. Right, right, and right, right, I right, like right. feeling good. I am four. Yeah, that's, that's I think as far as it went. The trajectory. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's good that you stopped that because you don't want your brother to associate feeling good with in the sibling. way that he did with a sibling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel so ashamed about this though because I also remember that this is when I realized that rubbing against somebody, uh, something slash someone felt good, and it's disgusting to me that I figured this out while experimenting with my little brother. It happens. And then, when we go back up, back to vacation, I remember hanging out with my cousin, female, who is three years younger than me, and I asked her if she wanted to play the same game. Uh, and the same thing happened a few times. We rubbed against each other, and I remember it felt good, but after a few times, we stopped doing it. I think I figured out that my brother wasn't the right person to be doing this with, but I was still curious and it felt good. So I thought maybe my cousin would be interested in playing this, in quotes, game. My cousin and I are very close now, so I've been considering talking to her about it and seeing uh, what she remembers. I mean, my my first thing was going to be like, hey, how about you talk to the people that this happened with first? Yeah, because odds are they might not even, that's not even, it might not even be a blip on their radar. Yeah. And you've been so ashamed of this for your whole life. Yeah. Think of all that energy you could have fucking saved. Yeah. You know? That one bothers me a little less because we're closer in age and both females. Right. So I feel like maybe that could be considered more childhood experimentation but my brother and I are nine years apart so I feel like a fucking predator I was the older child who should have known better and known this was wrong yeah again and all your energy is also going towards self if you want to talk about so you're having this whole monologue I feel so guilty me 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 just fucking check in with the person who you think you're scared you would affect it immediately yeah because maybe you'll find out there was no damage done yeah that's the immediate thing to do Uh, I was the older child who should have known better and known this was wrong also to clarify these situations were always with clothes on but in a bed kind of dry humping because it felt good I did that a lot of my childhood Uh, I just you know and she was in parentheses gross uh you might ask uh some questions about my parents they definitely didn't know this happened my mom has severe anxiety and my dad is pretty emotionally distant and they never really gave me a sex talk that's unfortunate but none of that really matters here yeah. uh, other than making me feel like sex was wrong and we shouldn't talk about it that's relevant Healthy. um so I got most of my, quote, sex education from friends and TV movies until eighth grade when my school gave me a sex talk. Okay, also, all this over-explaining, you feel so guilty about it yeah, that you're, you're, like, it's it's this overwhelming. Guilt, yeah, and once you get rid of this guilt, I think you're, I don't know how your life is right now, but I feel like it'll get a lot better. Yeah. Uh, although that talk was steeped in religious bullshit and abstinence messaging, so it wasn't really that informative other than shaming us deeper into thinking sex was wrong. So my questions are, did I molest my brother? No. Did I molest my cousin? No. Am I a predator? Nope. And what should I do about this? Talk, talk to the people you affect. Do I need to talk to my cousin, my brother? Uh, I, I know I need to tell my therapist, but I'm scared about the repercussions, a.k.a. how she'll judge me. It's therapy. Yeah, okay. If you're, if you're, you're judging yourself too much. You have to be your fucking self, and that includes being good and bad. Like, honestly, you're just, you're wasting, you want to feel guilty about something? Feel guilty about your wasting you and your yeah. therapist's time. Yeah. Um. I would love to hear your thoughts as two people I trust and are willing to discuss these taboo topics. Thank you for everything you do. Sincerely, did I molest my It's so funny. We've been doing this show so long that I'm like, this is not a taboo to me in any way. Yeah. But I, I think we talked about a while back. Like, like Lena Dunham wrote a book, a, a, a memoir, I think, maybe, and then she was yeah. talking about, like, being experimental, like, sexually, but kind of in quotes, because it's like, kids don't really know about sex, but they know exactly what Corinne said. Like, when you rub your body against something, it feels good. A child doesn't have the social wherewithal to go, that's wrong. They don't, we don't have shame yet it's about to get embedded in us but it's not there yet so we're kind of freely expressing it which is like this beautiful thing you know um but i remember when lena dunham wrote that book about and she was talking about her little sister people were like lena dunham's a predator it's like no she's fucking not child sexual experimentation i don't know if i want to call it that but like this is what every a lot of kids do it and i think that um like i had a friend who was a year older than me 
that I would do it with. We played a couple of hot games of house uh, many times. And then I remember a, a, a girlfriend of mine that was similar. I mean, it was like eight. I remember one year I, I asked her if I could like scratch her butt because that's what me and the other kid were doing. Like, you know, like just like nice, like tickle. And she was like, OK. And then I did it. And then there was a there was a period where I felt guilty about that. And then I was like, wait, you didn't do it. It's OK. It's like, it's fine. It's okay. You scratched your, you scratch your butt. I scratched your butt. And you go on to scratch many more butts. Yeah, I love getting my butt scratched. So, I mean, me personally, my thoughts on this are, okay, For let's start out with you're not a bad person. And I think that's something you've been grappling with a bit. Yeah. Do I think you did something wrong? Actually, I do. Um, 13, unless, unless you have a developmental disability, I do think that you should know not to dry hump a four-year-old. Call me crazy. But that, that being well, said, I wonder if they were wrestling because, like, siblings wrestle with each other all the time. No, like, I mean this is pretty spe- specific. I mean, yeah. and, it's, and it's okay, and I think that's why you feel this immense guilt because I think you know, and I think you knew then, and that's why you stopped when you, when your brother started responding. Right? Do I think this is uh, something you can't come back from? Something you can't heal? From, something you can't both heal from? Do I think it's something that has damaged him long term? No, 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 no. I'll know all those things. Do I think you did something wrong when you were 13 and you, and you should have and you know, knew better on the time and you continued doing it because it made you feel good? Yes. Do I think you are a bad person? Do I think you are a predator? No, 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 not, not a pedophile. I think you, 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 I think you fucked up and, you, and you're continuing to fuck up by, by ruminating on this instead of taking the steps to heal and to have a conversation with both your brother and your cousin. I agree. I'm less, I'm less concerned about the cousin one. Uh, although I don't think, I think your ras- rationalization of the fact that you're both women making it okay, I think that is that actually, like, uh, societally damaging. trick ourselves into that when in the, you know, gay community there's a lot of uh, same, uh, you know, sex uh, issues going on. Oh, so, so we've had our tricks grabbed by women who wanted to yeah. take photos with Doesn't us. Doesn't make it better. Let me tell Never you. Never had a guy do that, so. Um, uh, so, yeah, I, mean, I just said, yeah, immediately move forward and have these conversations. I, I think if you're, like, if you're going to feel guilty about anything, like, f- feel guilty about, like, so you're not letting people heal because you're worried about what your therapist thinks of you. That's the grossest part of this email to me. Yes. It's not the fucking dry humping the four-year-old. Yeah, you made a mistake when you were 13. Was that inappropriate? Do I think you, you should have known better at 13? Yeah, because because you know how I rationalize in my head though, a thirteen year old would be hired and left to babysit a four year old. That's oh, that really to me is what yes, one hundred percent. That I think a twelve year old would be. Um, I guess so. And so to me, it's like you're a teenager. You really should be, you know, some some thirteen year olds or many thirteen year olds are actively participating in sex, you know. Ooh, and I know yeah, you didn't know, and I know you're religious, and that's fine. Again, like, let's, this blame game, this guilt, it's a waste of everybody's fucking time and energy at this point. And that's the part that's kind of pissing me off about yeah. this. Do the work to heal and to make sure everyone that you fear you affected is okay. Because right now you're in a place where it's just and it's and it's also so me me me. That's the you, oh the, the gross part about it is the me 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 me. Okay, all right. You felt the you felt whatever you felt. Move fucking forward. Have these responsible adult conversations with your brother and your cousin and your therapist, and let's heal these wounds. That's the end of it. You're, you're not you're not a bad person for the rest of your life. You're not a predator. You don't need to put yourself on a list. This is so fucking dramatic. Yeah, just and, do the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there is a little bit of an air of like not romanticizing yes, the guilt a little bit, yes. but like yeah, yeah, like dancing with it a little too tightly. Oh my god, this has probably been your whole fucking identity at this yeah. point. And you was not, predator. Yeah, and you've not told anybody about it yeah. except us and now the world. Yeah, uh, it's okay. Yes, it's okay. You're not a bad person. Nope. You made a mistake. We all make mistakes. We you all do what, things you know that what, are not great. You know what bad people don't do? They don't ponder whether they're a good or bad person. So yeah. there's one sign. Yeah, no, they're romanticizing for sure. Um, but yeah, after you come see us in Los Angeles, uh, well, before that, technically, uh, if you're in Springfield, Missouri, I'm headlining the Blue Room Comedy Club March 22nd and 23rd for four shows total. Uh, my debut stand up album, Good Girl Barbara, is now available for you to listen for free on Spotify, or you can buy it if you want. But what I really love is if you signed up for my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. And for $5 a month, you can hear my group Zoom therapy. Well, it's share because I'm not a licensed therapist. Uh, but I host them once a week and I upload the audio and it's really cool. It's all, people just get to the point and there's no small talk and I really appreciate it. And I always leave these zooms feeling better about humanity, which is, there's not a lot of things in my life that make me feel better about humanity, but these zooms are one of them. So, uh, I would love it if you signed up patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. 
And uh, if you want to listen to my solo podcast, it's Without a Country. We talk about the news in an accessible way, right? I think mm. like sometimes we think about the only accessible news, meaning using words that we can actually understand, not p- high end political jargon is Fox News. And I think that's unfortunate, but I do think that they have seen success because their news is accessible. You don't have to have a college degree. And I think that's a good thing. We don't need the news to be elite. We need everyone to be able to access it. And that's what I'm trying to do with Without a Country podcast. So listen to that on Wednesdays. It comes out on YouTube on the Without a Country podcast YouTube channel, as well as anywhere you listen to podcasts. And then my stand-up tour, Eye of the Tiger Tour 2024, featuring Chloe LeBranch. I am doing a 14-city stand-up tour. It's uh, all new material. I repurpose, like, a couple of jokes that you might have heard before, but overall, like, a really new hour. um, And it's fun, um, and I'm proud of it. And I think you're going to have a fucking great time. A lot of these are one-nighters, so buy your tickets now. Okay, I'm doing like one nighters because I just don't I don't I just don't need to spend a weekend in Tampa for being quite honest. Okay, so these don't. are the cities I'm Why going not? to uh, starting April 17th with Tampa, Florida, uh, Miami, Florida, April 18th, Atlanta, Georgia, April 19th and 20th, Columbus, Ohio. I'm funny bone excited to be back April 25th, Raleigh, North Carolina, April 30th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, May 1st, Boston, Massachusetts, May 2nd. Portland, Oregon, May 14th, San Francisco, California, May 15th, Sacramento, California, May 16th, Seattle, Washington, May 17th, Houston, Texas, June 27th, Austin, Texas, June 28th and 29th, and Salt Lake City, Utah. You are starting out my birthday weekend on September 26th, so fucking bring it, fucking bring it, bring it. All they sleep in heads like LA was this past year, because I'm, I'm fucking still mad at them about that shit. Uh, Salt Lake City, I love you, and that's why I, I feel comfortable starting my birthday weekend with you. But buy those tickets now. I love Salt Lake City. because I love wise guys. The yeah. Mormons are fucking wild. The yeah. Mormons? Yeah, the ex Mormons are more wild. wild. And you're like, this is very fun. Yeah. yeah, this is very fun. It is very fun. Um, I wanted to get your opinion on this Instagram post. It's from um, Jake Woodward. Wood- Woodard. Mm-hmm. Sounds like St. Woodard from PA. Woodard. Um, I want to shout out his handle. It's underscore Jake, W-O-O-D-A-R-D. Uh, his bio says, Helping nice guys, quotes, discover their masculine edge and enhance their relationship with women. Uh, and then he also says, Marriage, family, traditional values. So, oh, you know, we know what that's code for. Go to the kitchen. Um, but I'm curious what you thought, because I'm like, some, you know, some of these dating coaches, I'm like, I, they, they'll say things that I'm like, oh, you fucking backwards ass. And then sometimes they'll say things that I'm like,
getting to I do book, a lot of those concepts and like things that are just inherently true for uh, a lot of women and a lot of men or the feminine role and the masculine role, I do agree with. And like that is part of the dynamic. Totally. But what I think more so is not that the woman, you know, the woman has to play one role and the man has to play role one role. What I agree with that I, I don't think Jake would agree with is that you just have to decide who's playing what role and then stick to those roles. Like, yeah. I agree you can't both try to constantly butt heads and be the masculine, but I also think that if the woman wants to be the masculine and the man wants to take the more feminine that's role, perfect. that's fine as long as you have agreed upon that. Yeah. And then again, of course, there's my favorite, which is more challenging, but I found people that it does work with, which is, like, the, the people who the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I, I, that's, that's where I really am my yeah. best self. It makes, but that makes the most sense because everybody, regardless of your gender, has like a, a masculine side and a feminine side. Like there's, sure. There's so many times where I feel very manly and yeah. I fucking love it. Like if I'm working on a car, I've done that a lot. But like, um, like when I drove the Mustang, honestly, I felt like a fucking dude, but in a great way. Like it, it brought out my masculine side to me that I, I just loved it so much. Yeah, because for me, like, even though I feel masculine a lot, it doesn't make me feel like a man. It makes no. me feel like a powerful woman. And that's also, yeah. like, it, you know, isn't that kind of unfortunate ingrained misogyny in and of itself, right? Like, to feel, like, we associate feeling powerful with feeling, like, masculine like that. I don't think that needs to be so. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, I know, like, how to feel powerful in the feminine, but a lot of times that is intertwined with sexuality, and I don't, yeah. I wish it didn't have to be, you yeah, know? me too. Me too. Well, also, we'll do an internet theme today. So there, you know, I've talked about her before. Uh, there's, the, it, she's the slum flower on. I love her. Yeah, on um, Instagram, she she's hosted the slum F uh, flower hour podcast. One of my favorite, just feminists and, uh, and podcasters. And so, she did a speech at Oxford University that she posted online, and I wanted to play this. Too. Should we hook this in uh, via Bluetooth, Eric? I was gonna do it myself, but then I was like, "There's no transcription here, and I'm not gonna sit here and transcribe the whole thing." And she has also such a beautiful accent that we should just listen to her say it. Yeah, if you do the um, roadcaster. Mm -hmm. All right, I just want to make sure this is not too loud. Let you me know when you're. Um, connected. All right, I'm connecting. Uh, okay, connected to. Uh, let's see, Bluetooth. Is it recognizing it? If you want to give me some of the video, yeah, I think my phone just doesn't like connecting to it. Just go to the sunflower, it's the first pin one right. on Instagram. I can connect to Lauren's MacBook Pro. Oh, okay. What if, we, what if we just actually we should send inspirational speeches oh. to other women? Yeah, because we're always getting unwanted dicks. Well, it's funny because the woman upstairs for me, I know she sometimes listens to the podcast, so sometimes I'm like, maybe I should drop an early clip and see what see get her feedback on it. Nice. Uh, it yeah. It's not okay. So it's this one? Yeah. Okay, so ready? Yeah. Moving.
with a shirt with her titties her hanging titties out. Were out yeah, she was like, this that. was so great. I and love so it. I think there was a, a couple parts of that, but for, for me, uh, specifically, I think the part that I wanted to really talk about is that we use love as um, a distraction from accomplishing things in our personal lives, right? That's not exactly the way she worded it, but we're pretty we've much been fed that. We've been fed that, yes, that's the other part. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think so often, and I mean, I was even just like watching a clip uh, of Alfred, an old vintage clip of uh, Sir Alfred Hitchcock, oh, not my dog, oh, that's film director. I think you're dog. <laughs> no, accepting, um, I guess it was like, I don't know if it was a regular Academy Award or one of those, it was like a fancy dinner ones, ones with, you know, life, lifetime achievement types ones, and he gives this really beautiful speech, and he's like, I want to thank four people, and then, you know, spoiler alert, the four people are actually these four different really significant roles that his wife has played, and his Whoa. wife was not someone who stayed at home. Feminist. His wife, well, his wife was a extremely accomplished uh, screenwriter and editor and then he also attributes her to being like a wonderful cook and then you know raising their child right um and so she you know was a part of the industry but even seeing that you know he says i want to share this award with her equally and i love that and of course for the time period that they lived in that was pretty groundbreaking but it is still it's like so why don't we know why am i why am i sitting here in 2024 talking about alfred hitchcock's wife you know, why, did, why is her name not every fucking person knows Alfred Hitchcock? We don't know his wife's name. I can't even actually remember it right now. Mm, yeah, I don't know his wife. Right? No, I certainly don't and know. And so, yes, it's lovely that he's sharing the award with her, but as if we're talking about, like, who gets these accolades, who gets the respect, of, whose memory lives on? It's not Alfred Hitchcock's wife's memory lives on with her, right? And so it's, you know, with him, but not in society to only those who knew her directly. Whereas Alfred Hitchcock, never met that guy. I went to his fucking apartment in, in you know, England. That's how cool. much I love him. Um, why, why, why I need my dog after him? And again, groundbreaking for the time, you know, but but still, so it's like, I think, yeah, I, I think we have been tricked into thinking, and we've talked about this a little bit before conceptually, but that like love and finding a man and gaining the love of a man, gaining of the silly sl- sl- man in my mouth, is such an achievement that we don't we don't even need to achieve anything in our personal lives. We've already achieved it if we found a yeah. husband. And I, I just see, consciously stunts a lot of women. Yeah, and I just see so many women supporting men through these amazing achievements, and I go, that is lovely. And yes, of course that is part of partnership but why didn't you personally achieve any of these things like you obviously had it in you and there must be this fear in us that's like oh it's it's easier it's easier to support um a man um and he can and he can be the kind of face of our couple even though i'm putting in most likely probably the harder work i'm not doing the fun work i'm doing the harder work and yeah, raising kidding and it's helping him emotionally and supporting him and, and being there for him during these uh you know pitfalls yeah. but like it's, it, i just think that we, we don't even realize how much we're robbing ourselves as, as far as this personal achievement and you know it's so interesting too I'm, I'm thinking of now like all the sex workers that i have talked to yeah they'll say they'll, they'll drop a client meaning they won't no longer work with that client if that like and i've had this conversation with so many sex workers like yeah i stopped working with this guy oh my god did he do something wrong he just wanted to talk to me and dump on me and yeah. i'd way rather just fuck on sure and i'm like wow that, that really does speak to like you know uh what, what is the atmosphere like in your relationship like it's a really good thing to interrogate from time to time and what's the burden to w- w- yeah women? it's actually yeah. not uh, you needing to fuck all the time yeah you've tricked yourselves and, or maybe you haven't you know, you, you know what actually men are very smart they haven't tricked themselves into anything they know exactly what they're doing i'm like tired of this conversation about men being stupid is men go along with it because yeah. it's we- it's we- they weaponized it yeah and because it's 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 more convenient if we think they're stupid. You're not stupid. You're very fucking smart. You've built the entire world. And I, I'm all fucking on to you. Okay? Well, I think you'd be a I'm boy. fucking on to you. Yeah. has got you paid. Yeah, no, but I love some of There's very, you know, again, there's very few people that I really like to see on the internet that go, wow, that person is doing some groundbreaking work, thinking about things in a way that I love that can make me a better person. I fucking love the sunflower. Yeah. Love her. Yeah, she's fucking Incredible. I'm so glad she gave that speech with her titties out. I love it. You know who else loves Trump titties out? out. Yeah. 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 Our guests. Our fucking guests. Yes. We had a lot of standard comedians on the But when we say this guy is a legend, this, the this man, comedian. this man is every, think of your favorite stand-up comedian right now. Guarantee you our guest is probably their your sta- favorite stand-up comedian's favorite stand-up comedian. He is just... He's a comics comic. He is a legend in his own right. He's just such a legend. He's, He's also the number one person on my to-do list, which is... That's uh, a 
March 26th on Netflix. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to Dave Attell. Do you walk around telling people that? Is it like 
village on the weekend and they were all dressed up and yeah. having a great time. We're past that. Yeah, so that's the thing. It's like, you know, it's uh, like a Sex in the City thing. Can I reference that? You I've never been referenced on this show. Never. Let's do the first person right yeah. now. Yeah. Exactly. And I remember their fisting episode. Ah. Uh, I believe it all had to do with you. No, have you so. seen every episode of Sex in the City? I'm not going out to party, but I'm also not using that time to sleep. I'm just at home alone up. Yeah, that's <laughs> another fucking 
no endings? I try and also throw things out. I think that's always fun later. Oh, oh, I love cleaning things up. Oh, yeah. you don't worry. It does not feel noisy. Like, I, I like to clean late at night, too, but I feel like sometimes the cleaning and the going through the closet gets too noisy living in an apartment. You're well, a good neighbor. Yeah, we really. are. <laughs> I've never considered. The only thing I won't do late at night is vacuum. Yeah, I'll do everything I'll else. Do My well, I do laundry late at night, too. And yeah. That's very, like, it's almost like therapy. Yeah. Like, no one's uh, awake. clean, clean stuff for tomorrow. I don't yeah. think I've ever done my own laundry. I don't even know how to work the machine. Wow. You Why are you still doing you your own laundry, those, Dave? You need one of those scared street camps. We have <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Domestic <laughs> responsibility. Yeah. Time to grow up. What no, do you do for fun? I sent it out. I don't have any fun. It didn't seem like you did. Like I spent last week. Well, you're, you're fun. Like, your act is so Well, I love hanging. Fun. I love yeah. the comedy hang. Yeah, I, you're I, great I, think, hang. I think that's one thing we can all agree on, that, like, um, you know, there's two parts of the job. One of them is the doing the comedy, and the other one's getting to hang with comics. And yeah. I think a lot of people listening in there are comedy fans right now. you got some super fans, and they get it that we all kind of get each other, and it's yeah. always fun to hang and, like, talk material and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, you get a lot and, of writing done. You know, I would say that that's the cool of New York, where it's like, you know, there's a lot of comics here, but there's also, like, a lot of uh, a community, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of a, a thing. That's nice. And as an old man of the community, it's great. You're, like, you're a father. Like on the movie The Beach, you know, I'm like the, um, that woman who kind of sets the rules. It's, yeah. <laughs> Gets kidnapped or whatever. Not yet. It's been a while. Right. right. When was the last time you were on a vacation? Mm, I don't do that. I didn't think you'd you know, do that. If I get on a plane when I land, I want money. Okay. How about you guys? <laughs> I like traveling internationally for vacation. I agree. And domestic travel has been ruined by comedy. Yeah, I'm not yeah. going anywhere. Like, I, like, some people are inviting me to their weddings. This thing has been of happening. Course. People have. This thing has been happening to me lately. I think it's because I'm like single in my late thirties, that where people ask me to be their plus one to a wedding. I don't know the person getting married, and they act like this is some kind of an opportunity for me. What? Uh, and I go, yeah. I would rather shovel horse manure right. for free uh, than do the horse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is the topic we've been talking about from the beginning. Right? The you know, plus one to wedding? You know, Louis Cass, my yeah, yes. guy, one of the all time close friends. His special just killed it. Yes, he has a special on YouTube. Check it out. Very, very cool. Yeah. And uh, he got married and, uh, in LA to his great lady. So I get it. But he got married on 4th of July. Oh, the worst travel weekend. And I kept going back and forth. Like, I don't know if I can get out there. And i got to get out there. I mean, I've been working with this guy. And, you know, i got to go. And he's a friend. Right. So it was, like, the worst travel weekend. And, like, I, I constantly would throw it in his face. Like, yeah. why? Why now? Why, why 4th of July? What about New Year's Eve? Why couldn't we do it on That's New Year's Eve? That's even worse. Yeah, I know. I'm oh. saying. Oh, okay. I thought you had lost your mind for a second. And then I said to him, I go, you know, why even have
some and somebody's face, you know, that whole thing. Oh, that's thing. a terrorist so, You can't do that. You like the smashing of the cake? Well, it seems to be the thing that gets the most clicks. It's true. It's all about clicks. <laughs> would you write your own vows? Yes. In what language? Klingon? Uh, what would you do? Mandarin. <laughs> what would you do to Mandarin? I would learn it to I see what an old Valerian. Well, we have, like, Colin and I have joked, like, we want to, we would basically want to, if we were ever to get married, we want the whole thing to be a joke. Yes. Like, and none of it's, none of it's serious. We would have a dog bar, so people could bring your dog to the cool. wedding. And there's would like the a, dogs have to dress up? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think so. And then all the men have to wear one of the Dumb and Dumber tuxes, really? the, either the red or the orange or the blue, and then the women have to wear a dress for the bridesmaids and movies. Wow. Yeah, no, he's just for fun. Right? He's, yeah, he's from so Ireland. So he's like a coach or something like that? Nah, no, he probably wouldn't. That's Scottish. Sure. Um, yeah. Scottish. Um, yeah. But yeah. But the great about him, he's a great guy. Though. Yeah, he's great. Is that you already have the band booked? Because oh, it's just for all the people yeah, coming yeah, to yeah. the wedding to play it. Exactly. Sure, so. That would be fun. That's going to save me thousands yeah, of dollars. Yeah, everyone has a job to do. And he has so many friends that own bars, like beautiful venues in the city. I'm like, I think we can marry for free. Now, I'm going to throw this out there, and this might be better for your um, D. Reimagining, de- deconstructing the wedding. Okay. How about doing it in the round? Oh, I was doing it in the round. That sounds fun. That sounds fun. Like constantly turning. Constantly oh. turning around. Looks like a relationship. Like, you know, that kind of thing. No we'll sense. Speed it up. Okay. We'll speed it up. Okay. It <laughs> could be very dizzy at the end. I love spinning, though. Well, we've talked about, I forget which, have, which guest it was. Oh, no, it was maybe Dan and Jermaine. About how, like, when com- comics are always the center of attention when we go on stage and stuff. So, like, a wedding to us, we're like, ugh. Yeah, like, we shut down into Yeah. <laughs> You're selfish. The only part I like is that it, that make, it sounds exciting for me is the vows part, but that's just for like doing yes. stand up. Now, would you do them standing or on city bikes? <laughs> <laughs> I would do them on stand Oh, I love a docked city bike. Yes. That sounds fun. We do like a stationary bike, but it's just one singular city bike docked. And he's, that's and beautiful. He's holding it. You're holding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, would you do the Vegas? Would you do the Vegas? Yeah. So he has to wear like a hoodie or a 
a jacket sometimes. The denim one, that was a little bit more for a handsome boy. But. You know, do you put him in a dog daycare or no? No, I usually have him stay with a, like a friend oh, when I'm on the hard. road. Yeah, the dog, I'm, I work from home mostly, so. That's great. Yeah. Your dog is really lucky. I hope they appreciate it because I walk it's past in the neighborhood. Not like my non binary dog. You ever see, like, say, at a window, you can look at the door. Sure. But what are they doing in there? Having a good time? No, they're no. all looking at the door, waiting yeah. for their person Please, to come Please, somebody out. come. And it looks like they're all, like, like just Sad. waiting. It's like almost like, you know, they're waiting to, like, see if they get to go to Harvard or something. Right. They're, like, right. all very nervous. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they walk around in circles, like, did I get in? <laughs> and they just waiting for the person, like, the whole time. They're just, like, waiting there the whole time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Have, dog you, jail. have you ever had a pet? Well, I have had multiple pets, but never as an adult because of the road. See, I don't know how you do it being on the road with these dogs. Yeah, that's I, that's dog one. I have my dog's service license and he comes with me on the plane. I love that. Yeah. I love when I get on a plane, there's a dog on the plane. Oh. I'm like the only guy who loves that. I, I know, love. I love that too. Oh my God, I'm upset. Like all, when there's a golden retriever on the plane. That's a big one. Holy shit, I love it. I, love I like it. the little ones and like they're peeking out at yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And they get really nervous and you're like, what is it? Is it <laughs> can you feel it? Yeah. <laughs> this is a Boeing, isn't it? So one dog, no, no like a doubling up yet? Nah. No. One's enough. Is that a tell when you're when you're with a guy if he doesn't like dogs? You're like, look, this is not gonna work. I don't think I've ever met a guy that doesn't like dogs. I've met guys who are feel, who feel competitive with my dog. Really? That's I, interesting. The dog has to get to like him, right? Well, the, yeah, my dog is usually like will pretty much like who I like after a certain amount of time, and he does like men because I guess they're smelly or something. But um, she, yeah, he. I've had boyfriends like be jealous of the amount of attention I give my dog. Really? Jealous about the amount of attention my boyfriend gives my dog. Really? I haven't said that a lot before. Oh, thanks for creating space. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. then I go, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up, Christina. <laughs> well, the dog knows you better than he does. Usually, that's yeah, what it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, the dog will like, go up to it. my dog loves Colin, but it, it, my dog is very uh, he d- he likes Corinne, me, and Colin. That's it. That's pretty much it. Those are the only really? people that he like will actively be excited to go see. Mm-hmm. Um, but once he got into Colin's good graces, it took about a year. So he I you have to really it. earn. Earn the trust. Wow, that's uh, you know, I can totally see that because dogs, you know, they can they can see to our souls. A little bit, you know? mm-hmm. So that's good. Oh, I really want you to have a dog. Now. Yeah, and I a, want and a, a dog son. and a baby. What other things do you throw? We're gonna, gonna, he's gonna leave here with a with a, 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 a big to do list. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Men are always scooping up wives. It doesn't seem that hard. I mean, but look at the look at the up. scene. It's too uh, it's scene. Scene. <laughs> fractured. <laughs> the it's scene fractured. fractured. No, the, the comic. It's too much like a road and. Travel and I'm like, yeah, I really have to deal with you're it. running well, away, Dave. You're running true. away. That is totally true. Also, I've been plenty of let people. love in. That's it's true. great when you don't spend a lot of time together and you're in a relationship. Oh, That's amazing. My not like, many people put up with that, though. Oh, I love it. You gotta get someone that gets our, our, our lifestyle. You know? Well, because it's like, then you're not sick of each other. And then when you do get to see each other, you're like, oh, this is nice. And mm. then you're like, nicer to each other because you don't true. see each other often. You're like, I think this is the way to go. I think it's probably unnatural to live with a romantic partner. I think that's actually unnatural. Really? Yeah, and I've done it. I've done it. It's just you're not you're not meant to have somebody in your space all the time. It's weird because we don't have a uh, straight jobs, so, you know, like yeah. we're nine to five. It's a different story. So yeah, yeah. yeah. But I would say uh, my um, uh, you know it takes up a lot of my time is my mom. I'm primary care. You know, my mom has dementia and stuff like that. So it really takes up a lot of time. And um, you know, God bless her. She's hanging in there. And like uh, that's something for you guys to uh, think about is that like you know enjoy your. 30s and 40s, because when you get to your 50s, you know, you're taking care of somebody, you know, mm-hmm. that's really what it is. So. I already did it. My dad already died. I got a, I got a head start. Yeah, so that. I just, I just, right. I just, I just, I just finished that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I finished that with one parent, but yeah, no, I mean, it was, I, I broke, uh, I, uh, I was dating someone right after my dad died, and I was like, I can't, I gotta heal. So much yeah, it's, I broke it's up with him. Yeah. yeah it's, it's honestly, it's very depressing, and oh. it's also like, you feel for this person because it's like they're there but they don't know who you are but right. did she ever really know who I was <laughs> well, we'll be right back so this is an interesting question my dad didn't have dementia but so he he suffered cardiac arrest and after that when he was resuscitated he had you know a, a lot of brain damage and he came back as like an eight year old basically and all his memories were lost so similar kind of thing going on there but what I found really interesting is that he maintained his sense of humor do you find that at all with dementia? My mom's an angel like she really always has been um, you know like 
honestly, I, she's my idea of what a great person is. Like she always wow. volunteered, and, and it was always others before herself. Uh -huh. And she still is that way. And uh, you know, it's just it's just very sad that like you know, so many people want to you know be with her, and, and, and you know, she had a, a, hundreds of friends, you know, so involved in so many things. And like now, she doesn't really know who they are, and like it's yeah. hard to engage with them when you're sitting there and all that. But I would say for her and all people out there, especially the uh, other people who are dealing with this, is that. Music is a big thing. Yes. Like that. You know, music is with it, it, it definitely hits a part of the brain that mm -hmm. comedy doesn't. But music is the thing that like she can sing songs from like when she was a child. And, My like, dad too. Yeah. It really, it really is like uh, amazing how that works. How your brain will remember music. He didn't remember anything. And the first thing when I had like a glimmer of hope that maybe his like memories would come back is he. Uh, I played Hey Jude and he completed the lyrics yeah. of Hey Jude on his own. Because I started, you know, because it was it, uh, it was kind of coming back. Like they said, the childhood memories would come back first. So I started with like his favorite band from childhood, which would be the Beatles, and that. And then he also remembered um, uh, songs from The Wizard of Oz too. It's amazing. So I was like that. But then oh, after that, so comedy came back. I mean, like his his he was a very funny person, and his sense of humor was like back. Like I always say, he was telling everyone in hospice that he owned a porn shop. <laughs> I mean, he did. But I know, that's I know great. he did the baseball memory. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. could he remember all of that? Because that's so important for what he did. You know? No, he couldn't. Re God, I wish. No, I, I had to. I had to figure that out through pieces of his email and notes and stuff. He remember, like, he would say things about that business, but like in broken pieces that didn't make really? sense to me. Like maybe there, maybe it was something that if I had, I guess, known more. Because I know a lot about the business of baseball cards, but I don't know like sports. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, well, I, I hired him to do that part. But, but you're a good daughter. Honestly, it really is so, like my sister's uh, another one and my cousin and like you know we have a lot of good people like involved but like I'm the guy paying for it and I'm the guy going out there and, yeah. uh, and you know time. sometimes it's not much you can do and it really yeah. is like Long Island traffic is a, is a soul crushing experience so. and also just being with a parent who's going through that is just hard emotionally I it can't imagine terrible. that's not like yeah my partner's mother is uh, in a home for dementia and the, the, we went last Christmas I think a week he brought his guitar and all the siblings that's were there cool. we were all singing with and she was Are, you know, a little older AI would probably be part of this. Am I okay. right? 
Like you have a thing you put over your parents' head, and like you know, it makes them look like they're happy, and you walk away. And I think they're good. <laughs> you, you can feel <laughs> better about yourself. Smile, yeah, like, I was wondering like, where you're going. Go out and have fun. I'll be all right. They're laying their own filth. Oh, it's right. a headset that puts a face filter over them, so they look like they're <laughs> better time. Yeah, why ruin my day? Right, right, right. Why do you right feel pressure right? like you're not doing uh, enough? Always. Really? Oh, oh, see, that's I, incredible yeah. guilt coming at me all the time. See, I did a really good job. Like, I, I made sure that I would not feel that. Like, I did. Uh, I'm doing everything I can. And, that, that, that's, and I know you are. That's why I'm asking. I don't even leave the country because I'm afraid I might have to come back. Yeah, that's so right. I, you have nothing to be guilty of. Yeah, so where's the guilt still coming from? I just feel like there's always something more that can be done, and it's also, uh, like you said, about I don't want to leave anyone else hanging, you know, I want to do my, my part. Right. But I would say that, like, you know, when you're not, when you're not living with the, with the parents, because this is new, the fact that, like, we have parents, and a lot of my friends have had the same situation where, like, they either brought them into their house, they had family, and how difficult that is with somebody with an issue like that, being in a family situation, or they put them in a, like, a, in a facility, which, to me, I'm glad that's one thing I do this all the time. Also, like, gives them a chance to like redo parenting and and be seen as a good person in the eyes of a child. Well, you know, I'll tell you, there's times when we're me, my sister doesn't have kids either, so we'll be sitting with my mom or whatever, or like, uh, you know, we'll be sitting with them, and the dog becomes the center of attention. Like, how's he doing? Yeah, yeah. I heard he had to go to the vet because there's right. no kids to talk about. It's not like guess who's in college or anything yeah. like that. So. Having children at least gives you conversation starters with other people. That, so that's the most important thing. At the very thing. least, yeah. that's what you get. Like, oh, I gotta go. Science. My kid's not feeling too good. You know, right. that kind of stuff. It's an so. excuse. It's a conversation mm-hmm. topic. You can do that with dogs, too, though. Yeah, but I don't know. I'd say, like, if you're going to do a special, people want to hear more about your kids than your dog, right? What do you I think? disagree. I, I love dog man. jokes a lot more. I, I honestly I feel like jokes. most comedians start failing when they start talking yes. about their kids. I agree. It's so oh, fucking Patrice boring. O'Neil. No one wants to hear it. Patrice O'Neill, I've been in the room. The, dog, the bit about he has about his pit bull is so fucking funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Like, Burt Kreischer and Gaffigan are good with their kid yeah. material. Everyone else, and I won't, right. I won't name the bad kid material, but everyone yeah. else went soft when they started talking about their kids, and I was like, this is some middle-aged casino bullshit comedy, and I don't really? want to hear it. Yeah. I always felt like the crowd themselves were like, you know, they're, they're like, away from their kids, but they love to hear kind of like, you know, hey, someone else is going through it. That's why I always totally. thought that that stuff would kill. But I can see your side of it. I yeah. agree with you on that. I guess it's also, you know, I had only been, you know, when I was a comedy super fan, you know, now I'm in it, but, like, I was just too young to, like, I'm like, I don't want to hear, I want to hear drinking stories yeah, and debauchery. Yeah. I don't want to hear, well, how your kid had a snot, like, mm. yawn. I, uh, I know what you're talking about, but it seems like when you do that, it's called the, um, Seven o'clock on a Saturday show where it's mostly the families, you yeah. know, like the the, I hate those the couple, the yeah. couples are coming out, you know, yeah. it's like the it's one night, night out. out. Right. Night out. You feel like they want to hear that, like you know, I, you know, my kid is a something, right? You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Is yeah. there anything in life that you want to do and haven't yet? Mm, so it's such a great one. I don't know. Uh, like making, noises, oh. making, making noises, making making noises. No, there's lots of stuff I'd like to do. I mean. There's states that I haven't even played yet. Oh, which ones? Guess. Nebraska. Played it. Montana. Alaska. No.
or a list of like places I want to go, and there are a lot of places like that we do historically well. But I'm like, I want to fucking go to Alaska. I want to go to Hawaii. Like I want to go to all these places. Australia. Yeah. I want to travel. Haven't done that. I haven't done oh, that. Oh, you've never done Australia? No, it's too long a flight. Yeah. And, um, That's why I, keeps... I can't leave the country. Yeah. I can't leave the country. Right. I smoke, yeah, so yeah. it would be really like a meltdown on the plane. I think. That's what I would think. Like oh, Australia, we have so many fans there, and they keep saying, "When are you going?" And I go, "When you make Australia closer." Or when you just came me to yes. fly first class. And and also, when people act so mental on planes, I'm, I'm more scared of the. Uh, I'm not scared of me. I'm scared of the other passengers yes. and how they will start behaving. Like on a, on an LA flight, people are acting like maniacs. Really? Yeah. There's always there's just people's behavior is always it's bad, weird and elevated and not normal reactions to like banal things. I can't handle mm-hmm. it. I don't. Well, here's how you do it. You go from here to LA, you do some shows there, yeah. whatever. Then you go to Hawaii, okay? Then you go to Korea, South Korea. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Oh, so now you're slowly working your right. way down to Australia. Okay? That sounds then fun. You, then you go to Thailand or one of those places, you know? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. If my dog, I'm, I'm away from my dog too long already. Yeah. It's too long. But that's the way that, that I was thinking, like, you know, I can fly seven hours, I guess. So I was, like, thinking, how could I get down there? I got right. 14. Whoa. And I was, and that. And I was fine. Whoa. 14 was fine. When we flew for the year, so, like, it was endless. Like, some of these flights, some of these are, like, prop planes. So, yeah. Holy shit. You know, what can I tell you? Like, um, Comics of International now. Yeah. You, know, you see that at the Comics of International. It's like, comics coming from all the world. And, like, the audience themselves are coming from all the world. So this is a great time if you'd love to travel. Like, yeah. I was talking to a bunch of comics about traveling. That, like, yeah, you can actually get some decent gigs around the world. It wasn't always that way. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I was talking to my friend, Casey Robbie. They're both comics that live in my building. And they were saying they just got back from Amsterdam. They had a woman yeah. organize a tour in Amsterdam, Germany. We have a lot of fans in Germany. Um, that would be a good one for you guys. And then it's just, just like, you also don't have to worry about being a draw. They just arrange it. And there's a lot of, like, uh, everybody speaks English. Everybody, like, and they have, like, a guaranteed audience. It's yeah. not just, like, American comics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You're not necessarily <laughs> making money, but you're not losing it. You're, like, a little bit breaking See, that's where, that's where I have a problem. Because, like, yeah. the whole experience of traveling, that's great. You know, I'd love yeah. to go to the museums and the food. Yeah. And but, like, i got to make some You want to make money. I yeah, want to yeah. make some money. So, yeah. it's either Deutsche Marks or uh, I'll take the food around. Wow. Know, oh, oh. You're really, like, an international comic. You know? yeah, yeah. What's the number one country that you want to go to, even if it was just for, and I know you don't like this, just for a vacation? Just for a vacation? Yeah. Like, where's the place? I like, really don't think about it. You're I mean, not interested in seeing the world? Um, I can't. I, I, I would say that, like, you know, I've done some places in the Middle East, but not really the fun places. So, I would say that it was mostly for you or so. But right. I guess I would go to Europe. I'd also a lot of interested in Eastern Europe. Like, I, think I went to Romania and it was incredible. I highly it. recommend. But I'm afraid of going to these places when you're sober because at least, like, it'd be great to get wasted at Dracula's Palace uh, Castle or something. It's like pretty that. great sober, too. I went with my mom after. It was my college graduation present. Like, oh. it's, I retraced the steps that they uh, take in Bram Stoker's Dracula, and I actually went to Vlad the Impaler's tomb, the real Vlad the Impaler. Oh, wow. It's, was it creepy? Was it scary? It's not, not scary. It's, like, gorgeous and phenomenal and kind of mysterious because you have to pay, like, a local person to, like, let you canoe across the moat. Like, oh, wow. it's not easy to get to. There's wild dogs everywhere. Like, I oh, love wild to, dogs. I, the only bad thing about Romania is the food. Everything else is phenomenal. The people wow. are great. The place is great. Well, maybe Chernobyl. You know, I have that. I, that thing you can on go. Yeah. Yes, you There's can. a lot but, of them. Yeah, like an hour and a half in there, and then they Take immediately that ass out of that hazmat right suit. Out of yeah. But uh, that's cool that you, like, went. Is, I can tell what year you went to do that. It was before the movie Hostel. Because I bet you tours have dropped off right after that. That really kind of hit the whole, like, hey, I don't want to end up having my organs harvested, you know? <laughs> I think it was, like, in 2008. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 2000, <laughs> how old do you think I am? Uh, I don't know. I figured you and your mom, you're out there doing these castles, right? Did you go to uh, Bavaria, any of those places, Lithuania? No, we just we just did Romania. Luxembourg? Nothing. No. Just, I wanted to go to Hungary because we're Hungarian, but we, it just worked out that we went on a specific tour that was just doing Romania, and that was a lot. And that was, but I would definitely go back. But I guess for comedy, I guess you want to go to England because they have like a 
Uh, yeah, but they're a lot of hot people. A lot of strippers were really hot. Yeah, everybody yeah. on the drive was like, wow, you guys are way, like, this is no, uh, you know, this is no, this, this is serious. No, yeah. What do you guys do there? Yeah, you guys take yourself seriously. It's something in the routine. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, do you, so you, do you feel like you have an obsession with working? Like, is there ever a world? Are you just like, work till you work die, guy. like Joan Rivers? Or, like, what are we doing here? I, I think that that's, like, what else are we going to do? I don't know. And what else do you want to do? Yeah, what, is there anything else that you want to do besides work? Well, I would like to get a web thing going. So, like, you guys have this great show. And okay, but well, that's still work, it. Dave. Yeah, but, like, here, here's the thing. Like, now you're connected to these people, you know? So this is, like, part yeah. of your... part of your. How about you cam? What? Webcam. Oh, my God. Cam, Dave, the cam. Yeah, what cam happened guy. to OnlyFans? Wait, Why aren't you guys, like, involved there. in this? What? Because I don't want to be. We're not selling our pussy for no, money. No, but you don't have to do that. Isn't there levels of that? Like, you know, it's like mm. a pool. There's, I want like, zero levels of that. Any, any, any tawdry photos I take, well, I put I directly online. as we say, in my part of the world. I didn't know that. I, I want to force men to listen to female comedians without being nude. I feel like this has a very been very hard for men oh, historically. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I'm just saying that. What about putting the podcast on? Like I did that Dave's Old Porn show, and I'm like, right. that could probably go on OnlyFans now. So oh, doing a show like that. Also, the Patreon. Yeah, like you don't have to be naked. I didn't yeah. know that. No, people use it as yeah a Patreon, but I mean oh. we, we have Luminary already, so we're already on. See, it. I don't yeah. even know what that is. So it's OnlyFans, I just really got. Uh, Used to now. We're like, actually just gonna it. It. we're gonna isolate that, and we're gonna have to be the promo. <laughs> Luminary, no, I don't special. even know what that is. <laughs> They're gonna love that on Luminary. So this OnlyFans thing, yeah, correct. Do you yeah. see that as the future, or is this just another new thing? I think that's gonna be around for a long time. Women think so? are women are making way too much money for that to go anywhere. Really? Oh yeah. Do you really think they're making as much money as they're saying they're making? Yeah, uh, yeah. I know for a I've fact. I've seen some the, people. The, the plane seats that they fly. Yes, they are making mm. money. Yeah, they are, they are flying first class to places. And I'm like, oh wow. girl, you got mad. We interviewed a girl this is before OnlyFans. She sold her poop in a Tupperware container a couple times, and she jarred her. No, she was the fart girl. Uh, she sold something else, like pee or something. Anyway, she has two homes. She owns two homes. Wow. And I'm like, damn. That is it, it, Being a woman means that, like, all the things that we do for free on a daily basis, we can pay for Some do for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Underwear, socks, paint, like, clothing, anything. Yelling, saying, pay for me, pig, or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, anything. Too much. Yeah. Not it's into weird. it. Not into pay pig culture thing. Yeah, I'm not into or, that, but I, I, I guess I... Thanks for the wake up call. You're welcome. Thing, it's not going to go away. You thought it was just an, an opportunity for I, women? I was thinking of myself as a second chapter. Okay. I would love that for you, though. I would, would love you? to cat, like, if we could just cat, cat, like, in the middle of the night, cat with Dave. Yeah. That would be Dave's, Dave's camp show. Yes. Just you sitting begrudgingly at your desk chair. No, just red eyes. Yes. Like, staring back in the darkness. But or especially millennials, because we associate with you with nighttime, because we all watch an insomniac. So yeah. now you're going to be. Right. Yeah, and then, so then now, now you're still in our homes again. We have families now, some of us. Yeah. Well, I think that's uh, that's great. And to the fans out there, thanks for the support. But uh, this OnlyFans thing, I don't know. I guess that I could totally see both sides of it now, you know? Right. Because I was like, when does this get funny? Because now it's all about this kind of like porn, you know, kind of grab, you know, like a gold rush kind of thing. So sure, yeah, when yeah. does it get funny? And I guess it'll never be like a TikTok, you know? People yeah. want to see that. I think, was, was OnlyFans ever meant to be anything other than sexual? They just oh. they just uh, produced comedy specials for like yes. a bunch of younger comics in New York. Just did oh, a right, series right. of them. Whitney, Whitney did. Whitney Cummings did something with them. Well, she did like I think like the rose, like rose. but like, younger comics like um I think uh, was it? Oh, Jay, there's two girls I think I mixed up on. I didn't name their names, but like yeah, one of them uh, just did a, a special who's like kind of like an up and coming. Oh, cool. Like very. Oh, okay, so maybe they try to pitch it on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. Well, you know what. If a woman wanted I'm off to try new things, but let's face it, comedy is comedy. Am I right? Stick yes, to your guts. I agree. If a woman wanted to pay you for nudes, would you do it? No, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, why not? I wouldn't do it because you know what? First of all, that's just the beginning of it. Yeah, it's first gateway. It's nudes. It's gateway. <laughs> <laughs> then I gotta listen to her. Yeah. <laughs> then I gotta read her screenplay. Damn. Then I gotta give her feedback. Right, right. Then she wants punch she up. She notes on the notes. <laughs> she wants punch up now on these shows. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, um, let's face it. Uh, everybody loves when someone sends them a, a, a sexy pic. Of right? course, yeah. yeah. There you go. Uh, although, like, with women, it's hard for guys. Like, uh, we don't want... Se uh, like, guys can get a sexy pic, but it takes a lot. I don't think they have the brain I think skills. I can for, for you girls right now about this whole thing. 
He was like a, a, a good dick pic as long as it's not coming from your own house. Like, how did he get in there? <laughs> I like more body. I gotta in take it too. the code. Yeah. No, you, you, like, you, you don't like want more of an erotic, erotic uh, man. Just thing. like the dick isolated alone, it, just doesn't, I, it doesn't, doesn't do it for me. Yeah, but you would the story. Yeah, but you wouldn't <laughs> want to see. You wouldn't. Well, you wouldn't. Well, maybe you would. Get around just would. a pussy. Of just course. A, just really? a close up of the pussy. Yes. Then you can fantasize the other parts. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's the maybe that's the uh, the thing that draws you in the most. Okay. Is so that you can make it up and fill the blanks. But a lot of vintage classic shots, like from the Playboy penthouse. Like Sandy's Bush. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think there's a sexy. I don't know if it's a filter or something like that, but you don't see much in these times. Yeah, seventies right. photo photography was very specific, mm. and seventies Playboy specifically was very. Yes. Glossy. That was the last time you actually saw both sides of uh because then they stopped doing that, like you know, just back and then the end of it and all became just this kind of like pictorial like layout like that. Yeah, I guess so. No, no watching, nothing like that. Well have you ever seen like really the at the Museum of Sex uh I went like, you know, ten years ago and they had uh part of the exhibit was like really vintage I'm talking about like eighteen hundreds like to be just oh wow, people lifting their penny coat up. Yes. Have you seen that? I thought that was I've seen that. Fascinating. Or that was pornographic. Yeah. Whoa. Well, because I mean, like, lifting their petticoat up and like you're, but you see Bush. And they Whoa. have that thing that, that, yeah. that thing where you can move it and it's someone with them naked. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. It's, it's like I mean, just historically, it's always been interesting for us to see naked women. Honestly, oh, yeah. I love. I talk about it all the time. Do, do you know Cindy Sweeney is? Her tits. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Her great. movies. <laughs> yeah, what's great? Like, what do you like her about her acting? <laughs> no, no. I know what you're talking about. But I've never seen that show. Her, her, her breasts <laughs> put me in a good mood. Yeah. That's She's how good they are. Yeah. She's, but her tits, and I'm like, I totally get how, like, that. I am how, how I feel towards Sydney Sweeney's movies are how, I guess, how men feel, straight men feel towards breasts in general. Towards Sydney like, Sweeney's they movies. They make my, day, yeah, obviously. <laughs> they make my day better. Really? What part of a woman do you like the best? I, I think everything you're saying is good, and I think that she really is. She, <laughs> well, I remember reading. She said, she said when she was younger, she felt like self-conscious, and that she's so glad that she, you know, like lived up to her. with them. Yeah, like I mean, honestly, she so. leaned into the tits. But for a while there, it was like more of a people wanted more of a uh, oh, what is it called? Like where, like no curves. Like a skinny, like oh, yeah, like the like 90s. 90s. Yeah, that, yeah. that weird, like uh, that kind of yeah. thing. But I always held out for the boobs. You know? Yeah. But I don't like a, I'm not like a big uh, bedanka dude. You know, no. like a big butt. Like, yeah. I'm not that guy. Yeah. And I always see those people and how comfortable they are with their butts. Like, they're right. everywhere. Yeah. It's like, almost like, you know, you know, the butt is in a, another person that somehow is attached to them and it's <laughs> everywhere. That's their entity. Like, wow. I have oh, seen a lot of big butts now and I, I used to never see them or maybe I couldn't tell, but now right. I'm like, oh, I can tell they yeah. fake as hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, you know, whatever. But a lot of guys are into them. I guess so. Yeah. A butt man. A butt man. Yeah. My butt's real though. Yeah, mine too. Mm. Do you have oh, any work done? No, not yet. I'm thinking about <laughs> uh, getting my knee done. I have my shoulder done. <laughs> <laughs> These were like I had to do. But yeah, I'm too old for a nose job. I think it's going to have to be what it is. That'd be hilarious if you just got a nose job in like your well, 50s. Well, I was thinking for my mom. With the dementia, when she comes out, she's got a new rack. Uh,
this was not my dream to be a comic. Really? No, what was your dream? I, back then, I didn't think this was my job. I was like, this is something I'm doing before I get a real job. You know, that's wow. what I thought. You know, I thought I was going to join the Navy. I had wow. other jobs. I had all these different things going on. And I kept giving myself another year, another year, another year. And then, like, you know, I did open mics forever, but I had day jobs the whole way through. Right. Which sounds pretty amazing with these comics now where they can monetize their clips or something like that. So they never have a day job. So yeah. that's pretty, that's pretty cool. You know? So then you were just so undeniably good that you had to be a comedian. No, I was not good. I was not good for a long, long time. But you, but you kept giving yourself. this podcast is proof of it. I'm still <laughs> figuring it out. No, I, I, I don't think, uh, I don't think, you know, I didn't feel comfortable doing it for the first seven, six, seven years doing it. You know, yeah. every, every I wish more people felt that way, Dave. I know. Uh, well, that's, that's, that's what I feel comfortable. Uh, 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 special yeah. under, under three years into the game. I'm like, wow, 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 I wow, mean, wow, wow. Wait, right, let's roll the left for a documentary. I think, I think if you have <laughs> No, 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 wait. No, do you remember? He like, was one of my very close friends, and he makes fun of himself, but he, like, it was, like, three years into comedy, and he made, like, a documentary about his... his life in, in comedy. <laughs> no way. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, he had that one that he's older. He just did an episode of his podcast roasting it, but, like, he was, it was very serious at the debut. Sure. <laughs> but, but these people have every set now on tape, which is, like, sure. kind of terrifying if you think about it, yeah. you know? Weeks. Well, no, just just the, I think they right up jokes. on the web right away, and then like, yeah. even even their crowd work sets are up there now. Too. So there's really no like, oh, I don't remember that one. It's like they're all up there. You right. know, it's yeah. like it's pretty amazing. I wouldn't do that. You know, I was terrible for so long, and I'm still terrible pretty much every other time. So Dang, I like to I time. like to think that like you know each one is like you know you're training for the next one. You know. Have um, you ever done a show and you thought I was good? I wouldn't say that. I would say there's always like that like. Man, I wish I had told this one, or like, man, that crowd was really good, and I had him, and I should have taken this, you know. And then, you know, sometimes I always cowered out, where it's like, I really wanted to tell that joke, and, and I was like afraid, right, you yeah. know, with the filter up, that kind of thing. Sure. But yeah, no, I, I like when I do the job, and I also, to be honest, as an old, unrelevant person, following some of the new people, you know, it's really kind of, you know, it, 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 it it's really like to see if I can do it, you know, because at some mm. point, you know, it's just like, you know, we. The, you can see it in the eyes of the young crowd. Like, I think we've been here too long. They're letting up everyone now. You know, like, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. You know what okay. Yeah. Fuck. Um, when do you feel sexy? What? <laughs> <laughs> when I do I feel sexy? I want to give you a curveball. Do guys really do that? I feel I, very sexy today. I like asking I men that question. I guys are right to horny. Don't they? they? A lot of them do. Yeah. But sometimes they'll, 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 they'll give them various answers. But yeah, they're, all, they're, it's, they're never expecting that question. Well, that's interesting. Well, I never, uh, I guess when I'm doing a pull-up, wow, I'm really like, you know, watch out, ladies. Are you doing a lot of pull-ups? I'm trying. Yeah? Really? Yeah, I had a shoulder injury. Now I'm trying to, like, build the strength up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To hold that baby that you're going to have. Yes. (laughs) My son. (laughs) To hang off the list. Bad. 
That's cute. Very yeah. cute. Little mask. Yeah, little, yeah, it's and a little, you can, uh, you can, black mask. Oh, oh my god, and you can dress your dog in a black hoodie. Oh, uh, yeah. With some oh, fucking green khakis. That would be, be awesome. awesome. Yeah. Black cap. Oh, I, this is really cute. The first dog hotel I ever saw was in Portland, Oregon, where they had like a little bowl there and some trees. Mm, that's right. I'm sure that place is going to the ground right now. Probably. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you. 